Looking to get that monkey off your back? We're not. Angels, Orioles, today at 4 on My13. From Oriole Park at Candom Yards, it's the Angels against the Orioles, second game of a three-game series. Hello, everybody. Jose Mota alongside Mark Kubiza. We have talked a lot about individual achievements, but overall, through 80 games, Mark, who can ignore what the Angels as a team has done? Well, Jose, all three phases have been excellent so far this season. The offense, the defense, the pitching staff, but above all, 50 W's for this club through 80 games. It's because it's the fastest in club history. The offense hit nearly 300, and they've done this without the full complement of their roster. So many guys have been out this season so far, yet they haven't missed a beat. Perfect swings, perfect staff means 50 W's. Well, they got there in a very special way last night, even though there's somebody very special for the Orioles as Aubrey Huff hit for the cycle. But you know what? It was not enough because Howie Kendrick did his part, and he went deep for the Angels winning the ball game. It'll be Orioles against the Angels coming right up. Even a full-size luxury SUV designed to embrace the driver should be a statement in refined amenities. Optional seating for eight and technology for everyone. The new QX56. Exclusively with XM satellite radio with XM nav traffic and a complimentary three-year subscription for both from Infinity. Those abandoned coins banded together. Think how they would add up. With Keep the Change, every purchase you make with your Bank of America Visa check card is rounded up to the next dollar, and all that glorious change is transferred from your checking to your savings. So if you wish you could save more money, now's your opportunity. Bank of America. What am I? An idiot? It's called Goliath. Of course this thing's going to be huge. When you realize how high a 250-foot drop really is, you are here. Six Flags has the summer's greatest thrills and the summer's greatest deal. Because now you can buy one ticket and get one free with coupons from Taco Bell. Take on Tatsu, Light, and X, the most powerful collection of coasters on the planet, and bring a friend for free. Six Flags Magic Mountain. You are here. With an exhilarating 258 horsepower VTEC engine, an intelligent performance minded cockpit, double wishbone suspension, and true surround sound. All you need to do is get in. The TL from Acura. Take advantage of attractive financing on select Acura models for well qualified customers. My 13. The world's first blind spot sensor sees what Alex can't. A collision warning system with brake support senses what Jen doesn't. The world's first personal car communicator warns Kate if its heartbeat sensor detects an intruder. Introducing the all new Volvo S80. A luxury car that protects the luxury of life. Lease a 2007 Volvo S80 for $399 a month for 24 months. $49.04 due at signing. The Angels on My13 are sponsored by Southern California Ford dealers. Not just miles per gallon, more fun per gallon. And by Jack in the Box, try the new sirloin burger, 100% sirloin. Your choice of cheese and onions, only at Jack in the Box. And by Infinity who use the power of design to create dynamic, beautiful automobiles. 
Beautiful Inner Harbor, Camden Yards, here at Oriole Park. It's the Angels' second game of the series. They took the first one thanks to the second baseman, Howie Kendrick. And here's Mike Sosha's lineup presented by Dodge. Figgins, he has been extremely hot. June coming to an end, and hopefully Figgins will continue. Cabrera Guerrero, Matthews, Quinlan as a DH, Kendrick with a big one last night, a big home run. Koshman drops his seventh with a lefty on the mound. Jose Molina in the lineup, batting eighth, and making his major league debut in left field and batting ninth, Nick Grinnell. As we look at the Orioles starter facing the Angels for the second time this season, lefty Brian Burris. Yeah, Brian Burris, you know, crafty lefty who could certainly dominate some hitters. He did a great job against the Angels at Anaheim last time in there, only one run in five innings, only three hits. Big thing for him, pitch both sides of the plate with that fastball. Use that cut fastball to keep those righties off the plate, too. And, of course, full count success. 3-2, the batting average against Burris, under 183, which is incredible, <laughs> all things considered, a 3-2 count. Obscure note, but an incredible just the same. Hey, it does count as part of the game. We are on the way, and Sean Figgins wastes no time. Bates set up the middle. Keep batting on, Figgy. He's aboard, and... He will have some worries for the defense today. Playing behind Brian Burris. Yeah, Fahey's a very good defensive shortstop, getting his second start here of the season for the O's. With Brian Roberts, a good combination, very athletic up the middle for Baltimore. Patterson can cover the ground in center field, too. And Hernandez is going to be tested right away. The speed of Sean Fig is now with a 12 game hit streak with that knock. Here comes Orlando Cabrera, taken outside. We talk about the base hit and the big home run by Howie Kendrick, but he came up with a huge one last night against Scott Williamson, the reliever, who hadn't given up a home run this season. They hit the ball game just a little closer. It's Burris. We'll take a look at his move over to first base. Yeah, that was a good at bat. The first pitch that Williamson threw a good break of ball, kind of buckled him a little bit. Then he threw a similar one. This time he stayed back and drove it out of the ballpark. Fickens is aboard. 19 stolen bases, four caught stealing. There's that slow breaking ball on both sides of the plate, as he talked about. He started with a fastball away, now the breaking ball cut the inner third. Yeah, it's that east-west philosophy of pitching. You show inside just to get him out of the way, but also come back inside when you're ahead of the count. And he's, he does a good job of working inside and outside. Not a lot of decisions here in the month of June. As a matter of fact, zero, but a good ERA. Little tapper, and then the air will catch it. Second baseman Brian Roberts, and there's one out. Got him out in front again. Orlando Cabrera was way out in front of that pitch by Burst. Said does a good job of changing speeds. He's got that cut fastball to break some bats of the tough righties. And very smart kid. ERA under four in the month of June, but no decision so far. He made the team out of spring training with a solid spring. Started in the bullpen. Now he's part of the rotation. And he faces Vladimir Guerrero. One for three, Guerrero against Burrs back at Angel Stadium on May 31st. Pops a fastball outside. It's a tough feeling when you're a lefty, too, when you don't have overpowering stuff and you're facing something like Vlad, too, who can hit the ball to all fields. And you try to think, oh, let me go way off the plate. Maybe it can do something to swing something out of the strike zone. But boy, Vlad can cover that. Swing by Guerrero, looking outside, a mighty swing by the big man, one and one. He comes in with big numbers. 329, 14 home runs, 71 RBIs, just missing a three-run home run last night to right field. A victim of that 25-foot wall over in right field here at Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Two and one to Vladi Guerrero at home. Burris, 26 years old, 1-1 one one record, 4-13 ERA. He has made five relief appearances here at home, three starts. And as you mentioned, June, a pretty good ERA, 3.93. And this is his fourth start this month. He delivers off the end of the bat. Incoming is Gibbons. He will catch it, and they have Figgins. Oh, yep, they have doubled him up.
That'll finish it for the engine. Here, in the top of the first, here come the O's. Could you pull my car up, please? Silver SUV? Coming right up. Whoa. Wow! Look at your car. I don't think we're liable for that. Need a new truck? Get to GMC and transform your ride with great deals on most 07s, like 0% APR financing plus $1,500 on every all-new 07 Sierra. Sale ends July 9th. More GMC trucks are sold in L.A. than anywhere in the nation. What's that thing? It's a salad mobile. Next time we launch a salad, let's just make a commercial. Introducing Jack's new Barbecue Ranch Chicken Salad with barbecue tortilla strips, ranch dressing, and a barbecue drizzle. And now choose crispy or grilled chicken on any salad. Hey, beat it. Speaking of hot, Right now, during Honda's Helpful Dealer Days, you can lease a new Accord LX for only $1.99 a month. What? Seriously. The offer ends soon, so here's my card. You can just keep it in your hand. The Angels fail to score in the top of the first inning. They get the base hit from Sean Figgins and manager Dave Trembley. With his lineup, Roberts Faye gets a start at shortstop, batting second. Kevin Millar, a new look. Ramon Hernandez, cleanup. Aubrey Huff, the DH. He ran the hit for the cycle last night. Mora came close to hitting for the cycle. Gibbons, Payton, and Corey Patterson. They'll be facing righty bar. Tolo Colon looking for victory number seven. He delivers strike one. Bart looking good to get comfortable out there. That's a big thing for Bartolo Colon. The ERA slightly high, but a much better effort last time out. Six innings. Good pitch by Colon. Roberts way ahead. A 324 hitter, Brian Roberts. Keeping him off base is a key. Yeah, and he's had some success against Bartolo Colon. A 308 career batting average against Bart. Plus, the fact is he has 25 stolen bases. Colon way ahead of Roberts, a switch hitter. Just missing outside. We'll keep an eye on Cologne's speed. Mike Socha says the speed is there. And he has been building up little by little. Now it's a matter of finding that command. Molina setting up way inside. And they almost got Roberts there on a two-seam fastball. Boy, two pitches painted on the corners outside, then inside for Bartolo Cologne. Looked pretty close to me. Last outing came against the Pirates at home. Six innings, seven hits, two earned runs. Four walks and six strikeouts. So something to build off of. Yeah, no question about it. Big thing for Bartolo Colon. Build off that confidence of that last start, which had a quality start. Pitch sequence you see already today. Not in that fastball mode every single pitch. Using that slider and, of course, finish off batters with that two-seam fastball inside the lefty or the four-seam away on the righty. 34-year-old from Cope Altamira in the Dominican Republic. He delivers a 2-2. Roberts fouls it back. Robert from the left side, a 343 hitter. His on base percentage hitting from the left side is a whopping 421. From the right side, pretty consistent, 281. As he is a man who gets the Orioles going, and they have had a tough time, Mark, just getting going. They did come back last night against Cabo Escobar, and the Angels eventually won the ballgame, but they are showing a lot of life. Up the middle, Colon knocks it down. Close enough to pick it up and throw the speedy out. There's one out. As we take a look at Bartolo Colon. Yeah, the defense, at Nick Corneau making his debut in left field. Seven different left fielders so far this season for the Angels. Athletic infield once again, led by Casey Kotsman to first base. Bartolo Colon, a very good fielding pitcher, knocked that ball down. The presence to take his time step and make the throw, but Nick Orno, a lot of fun out there making his debut here at the major league level in left field. Congratulations. After seven long years in the minor leagues, the University of Massachusetts product, Nick Orno, all along the eastern seaboard. How about that? 
Deep drive off Fahey. Guerrero got a good jump on it. Vladi will track it down for out number two. Two down now as Grenoble is waiting for that first one. He's yeah. had a lot of company. Yeah, you know, Garrett Anderson was supposed to be the lead guy out in left field, but been hurt a couple of times. Reggie Wilts filled in great. You see Rob Quinlan, Tommy Murphy, Ibar made an outstanding catch and left. Nathan Haynes with a perfect throw we saw, the now a couple runners. And Nick Gourneau making his debut. Will he make a splash out there in left field again today? Seems like everybody has done something special. Kevin Millar in the lineup today against Bartolo Colon. Well, Millar, there's a reason. Three career home runs against Colon, a 281 average for this season, 271, six home runs and 24 RBIs. Takes inside from Colon. 2 0 now. And we talk about pitch sequence in Bartolo Colon at this point. Where is that for him? Well, he gets into that uh, bulldog mode of all thrown fastballs, but you saw a change up. The Roberts get him out there, a 2 0 slider to Millar. Just changing up. Don't always think fastball every pitch. Use that change up and a slider, too, because he's got a good one. And Millar might be swinging right here. Three and one. Alone, six and three, 5.90 ERA. Roll foul. There's some of the stuff you're talking about. Late movement. Not necessarily the hard, hard fastball. It's that BP batting practice fastball with movement to induce the hitter to swing at. A read fastball. But it's a differential in the speed to get you out. It is the 17th career start and appearance against the Orioles for Bartolo Colon. Career 8 and 5, 3.20 ERA. Deep to left field, Grenault. Welcome to the big leagues, young man. You are aboard. That closes up the first <laughs> inning. It's three outs here, too. It's the Ford 4th of July Sellathon, and you won't believe the fireworks. Get 0% financing on every 2007 Ford car, truck, and SUV. That's 0% on Focus, Fusion, even Mustang and Edge. And on every Ford truck and SUV, get 0% plus over $2,000 bonus cash, even on the best-selling F-150 and Super Duty. Hurry in and save big at the Ford 4th of July Sellathon. It's gonna be a blast. With State Farm, I saved dollars on my car insurance. At State Farm, they gave me discounts of percent. We only pay dollars per month for our State Farm car insurance. Call today and ask for an indecent discount. Multi-link sport tune suspensions for better handling. Formula One inspired shift paddles for enhanced performance. Mercedes-Benz coupes and convertibles are where engineering and exhilaration meet. At Mercedes-Benz, we take the joy of driving seriously. See your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer for a special lease offer on the 2007 SLK 280. IFL Battleground, tonight at 8 on My Network TV, Channel 13. No score after one inning. Well, you never know. You're welcoming to the big leagues, and the fact that sometimes you may forget some things. Well, you can tell, you know, first play of the game at the big league level and not to understand if it's three outs, no outs. What do we got? Yeah, I'm going to flip it in the stands. And, of course, that's never not going to be teased on by when you walk into that dugout, Nick Corneau. Welcome to the show, Nick. You know the teasing's not going to happen, right? No, never. No, they never. never abuse you for anything. It's just great to see him in the big leagues. One of 13 Angels rookies. Gary Matthews takes outside. We talked about debuts and, you know, guys that get opportunities. And for somebody to sit on the bench for a week, you know, that, that gets real tough. And your anxiety builds and it builds and it builds. But getting him in the lineup, second day in the big leagues, a big thing. Oh, you, you walk out here to Camden Yard, just know that's the same field that Cal Ripken was on, Eddie Murray's played here, and just a number of great, great players. And here you are in the show. I don't know if I want those numbers to be thrown at me. <laughs> or those names, oh, goodness. Here's Matthews, taken outside. 
Well, the first road trip I ever made at the Major League level was at Memorial Stadium here in Baltimore. And I, you know, I was always a baseball fan. I think a book pal, Frank Robinson, Brooks Robinson, Jim Palmer, all the greats that Baltimore's had. And I, I, I couldn't breathe. And I'm sure that's the way he felt on that fly ball to left field. The first ground ball, the first fly ball, that first at bat. We will take a look at that later. Matthew swings right through that one. Well, here's a 3-2, Mark. We talked about the average against this young man on 3-2. 083. Because what he could do, he's a change-up, he's a cut fastball, he's a two-seam fastball at the outside corner. So many different pitches. What will he do? Matthew's a good swing, fouls it back. Went after him on the fastball there. More of a straight four-seam fastball to see if he can get out in front. And tremendous job as far as two for 24 in a full count. Played with a number of guys that were very comfortable in that count. Charlie Liebrand, pitcher with the Royals and Atlanta Braves, threw a changeup a lot, 3 2, to get you out. And that hitter sitting on what? Dead red. Good swing by Matthews again. Little by little, Matthews getting the comfort level back to his left hamstring, and so important for him are those legs, covering so much ground in center field. And also, he has the ability to beat with that, with that infield single as he has, as he did here last night. If you're Gary Matthews Jr., last couple of pitches and out of half of the plate, just look away on him. He does, and he takes it. There's ball four. Good at bat for Gary Matthews. Nice job. Burris, you see him get him to swing. Those last two, try to think of, see if he get him a little bit further out. He's never going to get it, give in. Talking to the Baltimore people, he doesn't give in no matter what the situation is. He'll make you swing at his pitch. Gary Matthews, nice job. And Burns himself a nice story. He was a 31st round pick by the Giants at a Mount Hood City College. Claimed off waivers from the Giants organization. Spent four years in single A. Not an easy thing. We keep going to spring training and not making that step forward. But overall, they trusted his stuff. Yeah, and, and you know, people have seen him. That's the bottom line. If you have some kind of arm success and an idea, you always have a chance. Here's Wap Quinlan taken outside. We'll see how much confidence he has perhaps on the fastball inside or if he'll use it only to set up the changeup. Yeah, that's the thing. You've got to have the ability to pitch inside. Otherwise, hitters will look away on you the whole game, and then they're going to have success against you. Quinlan knows all about hitting lefties. Career over 300. It's a good pitch outside, one and one. Quinlan is a DH tonight for the Angels. Three home runs, 14 RBIs. As coach Dino Evil goes through the signs as the running angels are looking to get something going here. Slow curveball just misses away. Now when you are looking at Burris one thing on his start from the stretch is you rarely see a left handed pitcher with an open situation here this right foot is wide open to right field going back and making the catch is Peyton for the first out got away with one right there Rob Quinlan just missing that ball out of the ballpark and a lot of times when you get a guy off balance just by a little bit it could be the difference between a, bit a home run and a fly ball to right field there but Rob Quinlan just missing that one out here comes Howie Kendrick. He has been doing everything, multi-hit games and hitting big ones like last night. How huge was that? That's the big part of the ballpark here, too, at Camden Yards. Ball just kept going and going and going. Tremendous shot. Huge win for the Angels. The Angels have scored and have made the score 5-0 with Kevin Escobar on the mound. And with Kevin Escobar just nice and relaxed, did whatever he could, couldn't hold the lead, no excuses, he says. But that's what you have teammates come through in a big way for you. As Howie Kendrick did now at 305 for the year. Four home runs and 16 RBIs. A pitch out by Orioles manager Dave Tremblay trying to get the Angels guessing on that one. Matthews, 11 stolen base and full of season. Yeah, you can see right here he's trying to be delivered, trying to change times going home, varying his pickoff over to first base too.
Good Taylor Nash tonight. That one is Kendrick is way ahead of it. One and one. That's what you do as a pitcher in a fastball count. If you can change speed to throw a change up there and get the hitter to swing, you get a better chance of getting him out. Burris trying to hold on to that spot in the rotation. He replaces Adam Lowen because of an injury. Goes upstairs. And this is a good count right here, two and one. Yeah, I was talking to Jim Palmer before the game during batting practice, and he was saying, wow, look at Howie Kendrick's smile, look at Sean Figgins smiling, Nathan Haynes. He said, boy, these guys are feeling comfortable up there. And, well, you got Sean Figgins now with a 12-game hit streak. Kendrick with a 12-gamer right now with his bat. They're all feeling good, and the confidence level is there. Very confident. Sean Figgins. He continues to stay hot. Kendrick, 324 against Lefty this season. Swings at that one. A very good tight spinner by Burris. Two and two. Yeah, it's at both sides of the plate. You go away, change up, then he comes in there with this cutter down and in on him. Tough one to lay off. You see fastball, recognize it. But once that movement comes in, there's no way he can hit that ball or at least put it fair. Angels in first place, five games ahead of Seattle, nine and a half ahead of Oakland. Baltimore at 34 and 44, 15 behind. The leaders in the American League East, Boston Red Sox. He came inside, a show-me pitch right there to Kendrick. 3-2 again. Well, here he is. Maybe he wants to work to that count. Anytime you get a batting average of 0.83 against you, sometimes it's not a bad idea. Don't. He doesn't believe in giving in. So that, Tom Glavin's another one like that. He gets behind like that, 2-1, 3-2. He's going to make you hit his pitch and not this little fastball down the middle. Eventually trying to bail off that anxiety by the hitter to get away of his zone. Swinging is Kendrick. He throw to second base. And striking out is Kendrick and a stolen base for Gary Matthews. His 12th against Ramon Hernandez now. There's two outs. And through that change of 3 2, expanded the strike zone. He mentioned the, the aggressiveness of Howie Kendrick. Recognize it should be a fastball. Pretty good jump by Gary Matthews Jr. 3 2. But Howie Kendrick unable to make contact. Gary Matthews gets in scoring position, even though there was a strikeout by Howie Kendrick. Seems like Hernandez himself tried to do the double clutch on purpose and perhaps call for an interference. Ask for an interference from the batter. Not called by home plate umpire Paul Nauert. Casey Cochran getting the start against the lefty, I think, is a good thing. Yeah, it's the umpire's discretion there. Howie Kendrick was swinging. He was off balance. So that's why there was no uh, catchers. There was no interference on the catcher there by Howie Kendrick. 3-12 for Casey Koshman, eight home runs, 36 RBIs. Angel Trenner capitalizes on a leadoff walk to Matthews. It looks like they won as Roberts will throw out Koshman for it. The third out. Inning and a half, no score. Angels, Orioles will be back. The safest accident is the one that never happens. The 2008 Lexus RX with 14 actively safe features. Learn more at ActivelySafe.com. Today I use the best practices in medicine. To help a woman walk again. To mend a heart. To save a life. I work at Memorial Care. I work at Memorial Care. Memorial Care. I work at Memorial Care Medical Centers. And we're very proud of what we do. Join our teams at Anaheim Memorial, Long Beach Memorial, Miller Children's Hospital, Orange Coast Memorial, and Saddleback Memorial Medical Centers. Learn more about joining the Memorial Care team at memorialcare.org. On your wedding day, when everyone is looking at her, she'll be looking at you. So rent your tuxedo at Men's Warehouse, and you'll look almost as good as she does. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. Decades ago, America's vehicles were enormous. Then they shrunk. Ouch, that didn't work. So Nissan built the Versa with more head, leg, and elbow room. Because you like that. Look at gas prices. They're high. Versa's fuel economy is high, too. 36 miles per gallon. The Nissan Versa, starting at 13,175. We thought you'd want one, so we put them in Nissan dealers everywhere. Get there today. 
The Angels on My 13 are sponsored by your Lexus dealer and the 2007 RX 350, putting the world on notice yet again. Catcher Ramon Hernandez fouls it off to the right side, wasting no time against Bartolo Colon. Hernandez, Aubrey Huff, the DH, and Melvin Moore, the first three against Colon. What a 1-2-3 inning against the O's in the first. There's a second strike, 0-2 oh now to Ramon Hernandez. That was a good slider, too, that first pitch fastball. Nice slider on the outside part of the plate. Talking about pitch sequence, changing it up for Bart. Just missing outside is Cologne. Winner but Cy Young in 2005. 21 wins, 8 losses. He went 222 in two-thirds innings. He and Dean Chance, the only Halos to get it done as Chance won it in 1964. Part of Angels history. A great pickup sign by the Angels, Bartolo Cologne. Really hurting last season. Physically. And emotionally for him. There's a strike to Ramon Hernandez, and down he goes. Bartolo, very proud man, and just the injury itself to this rotator cuff, but overall not being able to do this on the field. Yeah, this is set up by the changeup in the inside part plate. That two seam fastball starts off the plate, catches the corner. Bart looking outstanding already. This is the way he gets up on the mound, that presence. He was grabbing the baseball and challenging the hitters. That's what you want from your starting pitcher. No phase, the man that became part of Orioles history last night. Aubrey Huff hitting for the cycle. His first year with the O's, signed as a free agent. And Colon delivers a 1-0 strike, 1-1 to Aubrey Huff. The first to do so in Baltimore, too, when you think about all the great players that have come through here at first at home. He's got to be proud of that. Using downstairs to Aubrey Huff as Bartolo Colon, trying to find a rhythm. I'm trying to build, as you talked about, uh, six solid innings against Pittsburgh. Again, seven hits, two runs. Deep drive off the bat at Aubrey Huff. Nick Gurnall, here's the ball, and Nick, that is out number two, throw it in. That was still a nice pitch, too, by Bartolo Colon. 2 1 count to a changeup. Bart's recognized the guy that will challenge you with a two seam and a four seam fastball. But if he can start using that and get more confidence in that changeup, he's got a chance of being a different type of pitcher, a pitcher to go deeper in the games. Yeah, that ball went a little bit deep, but Aubrey Huff, you could tell by his reaction, was way out front. Here comes Melvin Mota. He also could have become part of history last night. Very versatile, so useful of a player. Melvin Mora saw himself playing in Taiwan, practically out of Professional baseball in the U.S. made a tremendous comeback after 99. And look where he is now. Yeah, you mentioned about possible history. Last night, if he got a triple, that last at bat he had, he would hit for the cycle. Two guys, back-to-back -back guys, would have did it in eight at bats. Would have been a record. Or a 260, 12 homers. That leaves the Orioles. Takes inside, and he was looking for something away. That'll stop your heart a little bit. That's good cheese inside. That's what you do. Show them inside. Get them away. The late Don Drysdale said that many, many times. Hey, you can uh, you can get try to get that ball away, but I'm going to make sure you're not comfortable when I throw that fastball inside. It's like Bob Gibson said, I make my money in this part, and you take care of the other part. But you got to give me something. Yeah, but I'm not going to tell you which part I'm going <laughs> to give you during the course of the game. That's the thing that gets you a little bit nervous at the plate. 2-2 now to Melvin Mora. Just underway, second game of the series. The Angels with a huge comeback win last night. Francisco Rodriguez recording his 23rd save. And a great job by the Angels bullpen. Again, it's jammed and fouls it away. Yes, we can go to the offense and Howie Kendrick perhaps and Orlando Cabrera. What a nice going they had. But without the Mosleys, Scott Shields, and finally Francisco, it doesn't happen. Does it? That's why it's so important to have a deep bullpen and a confident bullpen that Mike Sosha will go to. He has many options. Cologne fires away at 94. Mora fouls it back. He is fine in that groove. And don't think Bartolo doesn't want to know how fast he's throwing. He wants to know. Yeah, and that early, generally early in the game, his fastball is good, but it's not as good as it's going to be later in the game. It's good to see at 94 already. And with a warmer weather, something that we all know he loves. 
Here to 2-2. Gets jammed. Kendrick going back. Makes a play, and Bartolo has retired. Six in a row here in the first two frames was Chrysler presenting Molina, Gurnall, Figgins coming up. There's a difference between buying a new BMW and buying any other luxury brand. With BMW, from brake rotors to oil changes, you pay nothing. That's BMW Ultimate Service, above and beyond any warranty. All new BMWs include Ultimate Service, the most comprehensive program available. Hi, how can I help you? I got a few days off for July 4th, so I'm doing a big paint job. Today, if you spend $299 or more on your Lowe's Consumer Credit Card, you can make no payments for 12 months. Could use some stain, too. Pay next year. Spackle. Blender. Bird feed? This paint sprayer? Those two. Walk them out? Anything from anywhere in the store, pay next year using your Lowe's credit card. It's all this. We don't have to pay for a whole year if we use this. Meet me in window treatments. Okay. Save now at Lowe's July 4th event. Pay later if you spend $2.99 or more and use your Lowe's credit card. Designed for the extraordinary. Visit your local Land Rover Center. Feel the fury of the IFL tonight at 8 on My13. Kids, come out to the ballpark on Saturday, July 14th for Pitching a Healthier Life from A to Z. It's an alphabet book about baseball and staying healthy with illustrations made by local area children. All fans ages 2 through 18 in attendance will receive this book courtesy of Memorial Care Medical Centers, and Miller's Children's Hospital. For more information for future Angels promotions, be sure to log on to angelsbaseball.com. Oh, Jose Molina barely thrown out at first base on a very, very close play. There's one out. Yeah, they threw that ball. A tough backhand threw it across the diamond. Tough one. Hit, well hit by Jose Molina, who's been swinging the bat much, much better for the Halos now at 242 coming in at bat. High throw. Millar gets up just barely gets Molina, gets the toe down before Molina touched the bag. Nick Corneau with his debut here at the plate. Here it is. First major league at bat. And it's outside. Recently we saw another young outfielder, Terry Evans, collect his first hit, which was a home run. Shrant to Corneau. He was hitting 222, 10 homers, 29 RBIs in Triple A Salt Lake City. As I recall, Mike Napoli's first hit was a home run, also. Could be a trend. You never know. Can happen. There's... What did you do in your first at bat? Oh, I punched out. That was like automatic. I think I saw anything. <laughs> it was a blur. Big swing by Murnau. He skies it way up there. In the infield waiting is Kevin Millar. And he'll make the catch for the second out of the inning. I love the hustle, though. He was almost at second base when that ball was caught. Yeah, it's good to see because a lot of times guys get frustrated, especially their first at bat, throw the bat down and just miss a pitch. But Nick Corneau, a pitch to hit, too. Just got underneath it just a tad. It's a pop-up there. Millard's able to make the play. But good hustle getting in position just in case the ball falls in. Want to see that? Absolutely. The hits will come. Grinnell will have another chance later on. And here comes Sean Figgins. And talk about chances and taking advantage of him. He has seen one pitch, now two. But his first pitch he saw, he singled up the middle and continues to pile it on here in the month of June. Yeah, Sean Figgins right up there with some great, great players, Roberto Alomar. And Ichiro, with most hits in a, in a month since 2000, not that far away. Sean Figgins keeps getting closer and closer to y'all high. Takes downstairs, and for Figgins, yeah, we can talk about results, Mark, and the balls have been finding the holes, but his approach overall has been much different, much patient approach at home play. Yeah, we were talking about it on the way back from the game last night. Early in the season when he was struggling, 
if he was behind in the count, they threw that curveball bounce, and he was swinging at that. But now he's taking it and looking the other way. First 25 games, 133, 474 since. It's a hard to right field. Baden waits. He makes a catch, and the end goes gold down in order here in the third. No score after two and a half. So someone at Ford gets the insane idea to test the edge crossover zero to 60 against the BMW X5. BMW X5. It's fast. It's scary fast, but get this, the edge wins. The edge beats the BMW. Beats the BMW by 0.2 seconds. Is that a lot? It's plenty. Do Germans count in seconds? They count in German, but the edge still wins. True story? True story. Spirit of a sports car, versatility of an SUV, the all-new Edge. Find out what it is in life that you don't do well. And then don't do that thing. Stay thirsty, my friends. Let's go, just move. Rock your body on a floor, better go correct. The more clubs you hit at night, the more you'll need one in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Only at Carl's Jr. Find out what it is in life that you don't do well. And then don't do that thing. Stay thirsty, my friends. The world is advancing. Faster and faster. Are you in or out? Introducing the seven-passenger Acura MDX. Technology takes it to a whole new place. Acura. Advance. No score, bottom of the third. When we visit Baltimore, it's always marked. Good to see people like the great legend Jim Palmer. Oh, what a great guy. What a great mind, too. That's one of my first autographs I ever got in the history of my life as far as getting his deal. And, and I, I was talking about him. I heard this stat. And I just got verification from him, and he never gave up a grand slam in his entire career. Thirteen times he walked a guy with the bases loaded, but it's that kind of approach and mentality, just like first we talked about, not give it in. Bases loaded, he'd much rather give up one run than four runs. And all those wins as a member of the Baltimore Orioles, a world champ, this phenomenal player, this phenomenal idea of the mound and what he was supposed to do. Love to talk about what else? Pitching. Share some very interesting stories, nice anecdotes, and also interesting drills. He's to try to improve his curveball, which he had a phenomenal curveball by throwing with a leg on a chair on the mound to make sure he was dropping over that front side. Yeah, it's a big thing <laughs> to be able to get your elbow up. And he said an interesting thing today to me also. He says so many hitters, you know, hit sliders out, out of the ballpark. And he said that still the best pitch in baseball is that fastball down at the knees on the outside part of the plate. Force him either try to pull it or hit the ball the other way, but chances are it's got a good chance to stay in the ballpark. It's great to see Jimmy. One and two to Jake Gibbons. He takes the ball. Two and two. Bartolo Colon has retired. The first six Orioles he has faced. He has one strikeout. Jay Gibbons trying to find his way back with that groove. When he gets hot, be careful, but he's only at 206, three home runs. And many are wondering, where has that power gone? Command, fastball, there it is. Hey, Palmer what did, likes what it. did Palmer say? Fastball on the outside part of the plate at the knees, unhittable. You force the issue with a hitter. A lot of times you hang that slider, it's out of the ballpark, but paint at the knees by Bartola Colon. Great, great pitch. Good velocity, tremendous location. The pitch that Jim Palmer talked about, right on the outside corner. Nothing you do with it as a hitter. Just hope they call it a ball. You know, this comes as a pattern that Bartola has developed. If Jay Payton takes ball, down on that two seam fastball. Gibbons practically was saying, I know we're going to try to push me off the play with that two seamer. Guess what? Not. There's a strike by Cologne. Much better command. Keeping the ball down will be key for him as he faces Payton, a 299 hitter, one home run, and 15 RBIs. It's Jam. Goes to the shortstop, coming in up. Two down. 
you know, we talk about the ability to be able to pitch east and west, and that means inside and then outside, north and south, change the eye level up, and then use that fastball down at the knees to be able to ring them up. Another well-pitched fastball against Jay Payton breaks the bat for a 6-3 ground ball. Bartolo Colon's in a good rhythm right now with the attack mode in his eyes. He seemed very relaxed out there, and that is a Bartolo Colon that we know. I mean, the, the young kid from the Dominican Republic who just enjoys a family all around him all the time. But, and Colon will see a roll. It'll be an easy base hit for Corey Patterson. That is the first Oriole to get aboard. And after retiring nine in a row, a bunt gets the Orioles going. Well, that was a perfect bunt. There's nothing you can do about that. Bartolo Colon bounce off the mound. A little lack of communication between Figgins and Cologne. But Patterson's got a lot of speed. He's good at laying down the bunt. But you think they're on the bench. If you're Baltimore, if you're going to bunt there with two outs, you've got to be in position to try to steal the bag. He's got 15, so Bart's got to be a little bit cognizant of the fact that he's going to try to run here to get in scoring position. Cologne has an outstanding slide step and a good move, which he shows right away to Corey Patterson. Patterson can run. 15 stolen bases. Four times he has been caught stealing. And Cologne, one of the toughest pitchers in all of baseball to steal bases off of. The reason is that short slide step. This is spot right now, 1-0 count. Patterson, if you're going to bunt there in that situation, you're going to have to try to seal the bag. Brian Roberts, a good contact hitter, not a bad opportunity to be able to do a hit and run also. Roberts grounded out to Cologne in his first at bat. This is a way with that changeup. 2 0. Good sequence back to back, repeating your pitches just barely off the outside corner by Bartolo Cologne, but a good spot if you're going to miss it. Going the other way on a foul ball is Brian Roberts, and I think following a little bit more is Roberts on how Cologne pitched Jay Gibbons. Now he's looking away. Wow, too, another changeup. And you can see Roberts is like, I'm, I'm looking at the scouting reports on Bartolo Cologne. He throws a lot of fastball. The percentage is close to 85% as far as fastballs by Bartolo Cologne, but back to back to back changeups against Roberts. Cologne, the last American League pitcher to win 20 games. Yes, nobody was able to reach that mark last season. Cologne 21 and 8 for that Cy Young Award in 2005, and that was practically a national holiday in the Dominican Republic. Jose Molina communicating with his manager, Mike Sosha. 3-1 with two outs. Patterson at first. He'll go. And that's ball four. So the first hit, and now the first walk by Cologne. Has the Orioles threatening here in the third inning, first and second with two outs. Yeah, it's a good time for Jose Nibli to go out to Bartolo Cologne. First time a runner's been out at second base so far. Make sure you got the right idea as far as signals at second base to change it up there so Patterson can't pick it up and tip off a what the sign is going to be. Many times what Cologne will do in this situation along with Jose Molina. You tell me if this is something you did before is you go and say, I'm going to give you the first three pitches right now. This is what we're going to do. No signs. A lot of times you see what Jose Molina's doing. He's tapping the ground, tapping in, giving location with his catcher's mitt where he wants the ball to be able to be placed. The hitter is Brandon Faye. Hit the ball very well to right field that he's lined down to Guerrero his first at bat. He takes outside. Fahey getting the opportunity to play. Got called up from AAA. And got called up mainly for his glove. As we already saw him make a nice play against Jose Molina. In the Angels third inning. Yeah, with Bart Tolicolone's velocity, Fahey was shading to hit the other way for him. A little bit shallow to be able to cut it down in case the ball gets into the outfield, but with the velocity Bartolo Cologne has going so far today and pitching away, 
that's the way they're going to play him defensively. His last start here in Baltimore, seven innings. One earned run. Back on April 15th of 06. Line drive, base to left field, charging against Gurnow. Patterson's coming home. Here's a throw, and Gurnow throws him out at home. Two catches by Gurnow and an outstanding throw in his first outfield assist. How about that for a welcome? Well, we saw Nathan Haynes doing the same thing. Per perfect throw in position. A rocket in the home plate. Easily getting to Speedy Patterson with a great tag by Molina. Where you buy your gas, it can be a painful experience or a delightfully rare occurrence. It's all in the choice of car you drive. Honda, the most fuel efficient auto company in America. Lease a 2007 Honda Accord for $199 a month for well qualified customers. Today, more than ever, the name Toyota stands for fuel economy. You want great MPG? Your Toyota dealer's got it. I want my, I want my, I want my MPG. I want my... Scoreless after three full innings, thanks to the man making his debut in the big leagues, Nick Grinnell. Yeah, this is between short and third here. Great play. Charge it. Patterson can fly this an absolute rockety through in at home plate. I think it's mandatory to have a, a fabulous play when you make your debut there in, in left field. Ibar did it. Nathan Haynes did it. Now Nick Orneau with a perfect throw. Molina applies the tag for the out. Molina protected that baseball immediately with two hands and Grenoble made it very easy on him. Not a bang bang play. And that made it easier for Molina to secure the ball. It is refreshing to see it every single time prepared minor league players by the Angels organization and the impact <laughs> felt immediately. Well, they're very aggressive on the base pass, but they're also aggressive in the field, too. You don't make that play unless you charge the ball and you have to have it in you to do that. I know, by the way, took early batting practice, got familiar with the outfield here, which is something that plays different than in most minor league ballparks, even the way they cut the grass here in the big leagues. Yeah, you got that different design, so sometimes it goes like a, it snakes out there to the outfield. So you got to have it, like I said, you got to have it in you to be aggressive and charging the ball. A lot of times guys will wait back on it, but he came in there full charge and made a perfect throw. Here to be a perfect pitch there, three and one, now three, two to Orlando Cabrera. The of the order for the Angels, Cabrera, Guerrero, and Matthews. There is a walk, another leadoff walk, as he did in the second inning. One minute aboard for the Angels here in the fourth. Nick Gordo coming in. You see the ball kind of swirling around a little bit, but the charge on the ball and the perfect throw on the line. And Jose Molina in there to be able to block it, get some high fives around. Boy, welcome to the show, Nick Gordo. How many times did you do that, somebody helping somebody out, huh? Boy, I love that. There's nothing better than feeling as a pitcher. You make a mistake and your fielders pick you up like that. What a great throw. Here comes Vladimir Guerrero. Close to right field and deep. Long run for Payton. Up against the wall. He makes a catch and quickly fires in for the infield. Guerrero just missing that one. Just a little bit off the end of the bat for the first out. And the big thing is, you see Burris trying to stay away. trying to stay away. Making sure that Vlad doesn't get anything centered. Just on the outside part of the plate. About an inch or two off it. And Vlad just missed that one. Good play coverage. Hits the wall for an out. Just missing it, but I, you know what? That is a good approach. And somebody working away, away so much, if you want to stand that change up. Matthews stands the same way and fouls it right back. 
It's one of the few pitches burst through down the middle part of the plate. Most times it's off the outside part of the plate or the inside part. Last year, Gary Matthews Jr., tremendous year in 2006. Career highs at batting average, home runs, RBI, runs, hits, and doubles with 44 of them. Take a second strike. And that, according to Matthews, his home plate umpire, Paul Nowick, has him down 0-2. Matthews walked and stole a base his 12th of the season in the second inning. Well, the Angels have had a runner aboard in three of the first four innings. Burns, top of pitcher that he's not going to impress you with a speed. Throw away the Raider gun. But what he does is, and the way he's earned the spot in the rotation, is doing just that. Just missing and just getting guys to swing at his pitch. As Matthews look for a mistake, and they have Cabrera on. And Kevin Millar will get him on the tag. His former team went with Boston. Sean Fingens got doubled up on the first inning. Now Cabrera gets picked off at first. Two down. Yeah, right here. Cabrera's going on first movement by Burst. Got caught. Kevin Millar actually got caught on that a little bit too. He started charging in there himself. But a good quick throw by Burst. So tough, difficult to steal off a left-hander. You're guessing basically on movement. And if he happens to be able to hang his leg up like that, he can get you. Hernandez blocks his breaking ball down and in. And the first move is a move designed for you to take off no matter if the guy comes over. And Cabrera is one of the best at that, reading moves and sometimes just guessing, making sure there's a race there between the first baseman with the throw and trying to get him over there at second base. It didn't happen this time. A 2-2 count to Matthews. He stays alive, fouling it off the back. Switch hitter Matthews from the right side, 225 from the left side, 308. Difficult thing against a left handed pitcher. You just have to go on that first movement. A lot of times you look silly out there getting picked off, but if you are successful guessing right, you're going to be in there. Full them with that pitch. Popped out. Brian Roberts, the second baseman, will take care of it for the third out. After three and a half, no score. Introducing Infinity Acceleration Swell Technology, designed to unleash power in a way that feels virtually endless. The all-new 306 horsepower G from Infinity. Visit your Southern California Infinity retailer. What's he doing? The wireless bill comes today. Staying connected to expensive? With T-Mobile, get 1,000 whenever minutes plus unlimited nights and weekends for just $39.99 a month. T-Mobile, stick together. Northside, Southside, Uptown, Downtown, Upstate, Downpour. On the town, on the run, way off the beaten path. Acceleration, navigation, off-road, on-road, safe, secure, and spacious. Seven passengers, six days, five suitcases, 400 miles, three inches of rain, two stops in paradise. One extraordinary vehicle. No matter what the circumstance, you'll always want to take your Land Rover LR3. Designed for the extraordinary. Visit your local Land Rover center. IFL Battleground, tonight at 8 on My Network TV, channel 13. Our Nissan trivia last night, Aubrey Huff became the third Oriole to hit for the cycle. Which three current MLB teams have never had a player hit for the cycle? How about that? That's incredible. I know one crazy stat is the New York Mets, as good as pitches they've had in their history of their club, have never thrown a no-hitter, which is mind-boggling. Add to the Jim Palmer he threw at us. That's a good one. No grand slams allowed by Jim Palmer. Is Bartolo Colon delivers to Kevin Millar. He'll be followed by Ramon Hernandez and then Aubrey Huff. Three, four, and five for Baltimore. Interim manager, Dave Trembler. Taken away is Kevin Millar. He lined down to the left fielder, Grinnell. Uh, 
Kim Lawrence had a lot of success as far as the home runs against Bartolo Colon with three of them and a 281 batting average. Upstairs is Colon. So as the pitches pile up for Bartolo, obviously not a whole lot of them. But mechanics have to stay in check. Yeah, I mean, you get a good rhythm, but you also want to make sure you get to keep your arm up at that point. The last couple of pitches by Bartolo Colon, that elbow dropped down, and it's going to be a concern. Seems like he did it again right there, ball four. Second walk issue by Colon. Yeah, Bartolo Colon, the good balance point, a little bit of a bend of his back, but that elbow is dropping down there at the very end. Makes the ball, fastball sail up in the strike zone. Earlier in the game, working down, the elbow was up higher. This time it's a little bit down right now. Bart sticking the line now, double play ball. And Colon, occasionally we will see him just give himself some reminders by doing exactly that, just raising his right arm and saying, hey, get on top of the ball. As he will need to right here, he has thrown now five balls in a row, and Jose Molina will take this opportunity to maybe remind him of that. I'm not so sure that was a ball. That looked like a pretty good pitch by Bartolo Colon, but Jose's going to go out there and say, hey, listen, stay there all day. You'll get a lot of outs with that pitch. It's good movement, got a lot of the plate. A lot of times, though, when you throw four balls in a row out of the strike zone, you're not going to get that borderline one, and that's what happened for Bart. Lead off wide for Kevin Millard. And as Colon goes for win number seven, Jose Molina. Trying to keep him calm on the same page. And a couple of reminders here and there definitely help no matter how long you've been pitching at the big leagues. 2 and 0 now to Ramon Hernandez, who struck out looking, getting out of the second inning. Two strikeouts for Bartolo Colon, two walks issue. One hit for the Angels, two for the Orioles. Strike from Bartolo Colon. It comes down to not worrying so much about a Kevin Malone. He is very aware of that right now. No need to do much tricking with that front leg. No, you don't have to slide step. You don't have to quicken your delivery. Think more in the lines of getting the batter. If Kevin Millar goes, who has no stolen base on the year, so be it. You have a better chance anyhow of throwing him out with your quick release. High chopper. Cabrera will settle for one. And he'll get Hernandez on the 6-3 as Millar moves over to second base now with one out. Hey, Jose, the thing about Orlando Cabrera, how smart he is right there, he realized that's the catcher running there. A lot of times at a chopper like that, you have to get yourself in a bare hand position to make a quick throw. He realized Hernandez is coming up so he can take his time. And we take a look at our Ford leaders. How about the cycles in 2007? Three of them so far. Fred Lewis, the youngster coming up and doing it for San Francisco. Mark Ellis, couple up there by the bay. Now they bring it to the East Coast. <laughs> Aubrey Huff. With one out, Bartolo will try to stop Aubrey Huff. And with Aubrey Huff hitting, we spent a lot of time talking about defense and how they were aligning last night. Yeah, a little a slight shift. Gary Matthews was playing more so to left center field, more straight up to favorite right center now against Aubrey Huff. What well, makes Huff tough when he's going well? And he really has not gotten there yet, as he will mention to anybody who talks to him about hitting, is he does have a short, quick swing through the zone. Yeah, you can see the, the shift of Gary Matthews this tonight as compared to last night. More so pull happy. There it is. Kendrick will throw him out. And talk about pull happy. Great execution by Cologne. Got him thinking in one direction and pitched him the other way. Two outs. Yeah, Bart got to get back into better rhythm. His last five batters, he's been behind in the count. And anytime you're behind in the count, every hitter in the lineup is that much better. He's got to start working ahead like he did early on. Get that confidence going to get that good release point in your, on your shoulder and work down in that strike zone. Cologne has been spending a lot of time with Pitching coach Mike Butcher just in correcting a couple things, a couple adjustments here and there. And more than a talker, Butcher becomes a listener, knowing what works and what has worked in the past. He'll have his input and let the big man go to work. He needs to get it done here against Melvin Mora. That's a great point. 
Jose. The thing is, like someone like Mike Butcher will allow Bart to be able to say, because he's had a lot of success, Bartolo Colon at the big league level, and then Mike Butcher will kind of find that in there and try to figure out a way to communicate with Bartolo Colon on how to get to that spot in which he worked down in the strike zone. And that's a very solid bullpen sessions. Millar at third base with two outs. As Colon pumps it in there for a ball, and that strike zone seems to be getting a little bit smaller. Tell you what, he's not getting anything on either side of the plate, Bartolo Colon. And, and with the reputation that Bart has always been around the strike zone, with only 18 walks and nearly 72 innings pitched, surprising he's not getting that call. The large stands at third. He walked to lead off the inning. Center field, Matthews racing, and this one will drop for a base hit. The Orioles will take the lead, 1-0. The leadoff walk comes back to hurt Colon and the Angels. Not a bad pitch by Bartolo Colon. He did his job as far as throwing a strike and challenging. But Melvin Moore is strong enough. Again, I say it so many times, an elevated pitch is the pitch you're going to jam. It's going to get to the outfield. You cannot jam a hitter generally down in the strike zone. The ball was up a little bit. Quality pitch, but a better at bat by Melvin Mora. Mora, a thinker up the middle the other way. We saw him diving into a pitch his first time up when he flew out to the second baseman. And he looked away the whole time, got the base hit. And Jay Gibbons will come up for the Orioles, and he takes strike one. Gibbons struck out looking, looking inside. But he got painted at the outside half by Cologne. Three home runs, 17 RBIs. As the always take the lead here in the fourth inning. And for Cologne, who did not pitch any Cactus League games, and it was all about rehab, building up the strength. You talked about earlier in the show how the Angels were built earlier in the year, how they got to 50 wins, and not all the parts were always there. No, not him. Jared Weaver's part of the rotation. So many position players being out. Bart with a quick pickoff at, uh, at first base. Going into spring training, Mike Sosh and Mike Butcher were basically telling us they would have been happy to have Bartolo Colon ready right now at the All-Star break. Now here he is, six wins on the season and pitching very effectively for the club. it got to be ecstatic about that. After a 3-0 start, has struggled since, but coming off a very solid start, something to build off of. And swinging and fouling it back is Gibbons. Well, we've seen the rookie, but there's times when the veterans also get a little play in. Look at Kelvin. <laughs> That's held on by, looks like some bubble gum, too. That's not going to go off unless uh, Kelvin figures that out at some point. But it's a, it's a good look for him. Well, he's stylish. <laughs> Owen to to Gibbons. Mora at first base. He has seven stolen bases. And taken upstairs is Gibbons now, one and two. He doesn't realize it. Everyone else, I'm sure Ivar had a, a play in this. Oh, you think? Oh, uh, everyone's having a good old time. He's looking around and everyone's looking at Escobar with a, with a cup on his cap. That's the look of, well, in case he looks back, uh, it wasn't me. <laughs> See Napoli stretching out. Swinging and missing, and Gibbons, he goes down, but the O's score a run after four full innings, one nothing O's. Pepsi with Quinlan, Kendrick, and Cogman coming up. Monday on an all-new IFL Battleground. Can the lawyer take down the philosopher with these fists of justice? Encore tonight at 8 on My13. The way our vehicles come together that sets us apart. Now during the Chrysler Independence Day event, get 0% financing plus $500 bonus cash. Chrysler, engineered beautifully. Case is on. And here's the first number. Followed by number 31. We got two. Here comes the huh. third number. And here we go with another lucky We got case. three. Followed by <laughs> number six. And here it is, California. Your final mega number is... Man, that never gets old. Good one, people. 
Imagine what a buck could do. Super Lotto Plus from the California Lottery. Introducing the 2007 Cadillac CTS Bose Edition, complete with a Bose sound system, sunroof, leather and wood trim, and a 3.6 liter engine. Keep your ears on the road. Visit your Southern California Cadillac dealer for this attractive offer. Calvin Escobar. Getting saluted, being acknowledged, <laughs> and I think he finally found out what was going on. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful when you have 50 wins, you can do that kind of stuff in the dugout. I think it's a good way for his teammates to go, you know what, what happened last night with you, forget about it. They know they got him. <laughs> He's got the look going, oh, man. Still smiling, going, oh, you got me for a while. I thought I was a savvy veteran. Line drive by Quinlan, right at the shortstop, Fahey four out, number one. Audis on trivia last night, Aubrey Huff became the third Oriole to hit for the cycle. There are three current teams that have never had a player hit for the cycle, and they are. I'm going to go with Temp. All right, I got oh. Temp in there. I need to get a chance to get it. Padres. Wow. Surprising. You got Tony Gwynn going in the Hall of Fame with Cal Ripken Jr., the way he can hit. Man. No cycle. Maybe uh, Buddy Black will find out this year. Somebody will do it. Yeah, Florida with two world championships already, too. You figure with some of those guys they've had on that team. And, you know, Gary Sheffield, Juan Pierre, they've had a number of great players, great hitters. Surprising. Oh, we Kendrick, all for one. He's got an 0-2 count. And as the Angels try to get on the board against Burris, who has been tough against the Angels, not only now, but in his previous start, very solid. He won five innings, allowed three hits, Back on May 31st, one run, three walks, and three strikeouts. Over the mound, shortstop Fahey charging, and he'll get Kendrick for the second out. Yes, we can talk about a quick first step reaction by the outfielders, but for an infielder, it is dynamic when you have it. Fahey does have that. Yeah, you have to do it in a tough play like that with how Kendrick with his speed. you got to make that commitment, make that challenge, and commit on the ball, and Fahey did it. Burroughs on the mound here doing a tremendous job. First pitch strikes, 12 of 15 batters. That's why he's been successful so far in this game with only one hit allowed. He came into the inning with 50 pitches made through four innings. This is from a guy that had averaged over 17 pitches per inning. He's doing something right to minimize the damage, even though he has walked two leading off innings. He has made pitches. He delivers now one and one to Casey Koshman. Well, the difference between the youngster Burris today grabbing the ball, getting on and being aggressive as compared to Steve Traxel taking a lot of time in between pitches. The defense makes much better plays. Roll by Koshman right side. It'll be Roberts with the pitcher. A 4-1, one of those rare ones. Four and a half, one nothing, Orioles. It's the Ford 4th of July Celathon, and you won't believe the fireworks. Get 0% financing on every 2007 Ford car, truck, and SUV. That's 0% on Focus, Fusion, even Mustang and Edge. And on every Ford truck and SUV, get 0% plus over $2,000 bonus cash, even on the best-selling F-150 and Super Duty. Hurry in and save big at the Ford 4th of July Celathon. It's going to be a blast. love the details but you've never seen them like this the full HD 1080p aquas liquid crystal television from sharp ordinary toothbrushes can't stand up to it Oro B triumph triumphs onboard computer and floss action brush head help give you cleaner teeth and healthier gums by your next checkup Oro B triumph With an exhilarating 258 horsepower VTEC engine, an intelligent performance-minded cockpit, 
double wishbone suspension, and true surround sound. All you need to do is get in. The TL from Acura. Take advantage of attractive financing on select Acura models for well-qualified customers. Beautiful evening. Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Jose Mota alongside Mark Gubaza as the Euros lead 1-0 against Bartolo Colon. Delivering to catcher Jose Molina. Jay Payton is the batter. He takes away ball one. He grounded out to the shortstop. Payton, a 275 hitter. One home run, 26 RBIs. And for Bartolo Colon, the luxury is to stay ahead right now as the Orioles will get a second and quickly a third look against him. A good swing by Payton now, two and one. Corey Bartolo Colon just missed it just a little bit. Some of these pitches are pretty close. And if I'm on the mound, I want those pitches, but he's been behind a little bit too much. And you don't want to take that chance. This Baltimore club is swinging the bat much better, playing much better at home of late. Up the middle, base in for Payton. Hey, fans, would you like to be on the field with your favorite Angels player? Well, you bring your camera on Sunday, July 15th, and now you can do that. It's photo day at the Big A, courtesy of autotrader.com. Gates will open at 10.30 a.m., and a limited number of fans will be invited onto the field to take photos of their favorite players and coaches from 11 a.m. through 11.30 a.m. That's not all. All participating fans will receive a free photo day magnet frame courtesy of autotrader.com. Don't miss your chance for photo day tickets. Log on to angelsbaseball.com while you still can. A wonderful opportunity to get on that field with your angels. A lot of angel fans here at the ballpark here in Camden Yards, too. And well, everywhere you go, there's angel fans following around. I saw a bunch of them at our hotel today. They're excited about this club. Angels averaging over 41,000 fans at home. And there's that red everywhere. And proudly, Angels in first place. 50 wins. First team in the Major League this season to get to 50 wins. Five games ahead of Seattle. Nine and a half ahead of Oakland. 17 and a half ahead of Texas. And right behind the Angels, the Boston Red Sox start the Evening at 49 wins and 29 losses. And Boston 10 and a half ahead of Toronto in the East. 0-2 to Corey Patterson. He broke his stringer, Cologne, eight retired in a row to begin the ball game with a beautiful bunt single. Bartolo Cologne trying to go fastball, that two-seam fastball inside with two strikes this season, batting average of 171, 20 for 117. That's the key. Working ahead with Bartolo's been ahead today, 0 for 7 with two strikes on him. Well, the numbers do prove it. And the hitters will tell you it's much easier to hit at 1 0 than it is at 0 and 1. And then you continue on. 2 0 against 0 and 2. It's 0 and 2. And Colon will get him. The pattern continues. And he gets Patterson swinging for his fourth strikeout tonight. Good fastball on the outside part of the plate. What it allows you to do when you get two strikes. You can get in the hitter's mind. You might throw a fastball. You might throw a changeup. You might throw a slider. You have that ability to be able to throw so many different pitches when you're ahead as compared to when you're behind and you have the center of fastball to swing at. And Cologne will look to keep the Angels just where they are, trailing by only one run here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Top of the order again, and Brian Roberts. He's 0 for 1 with a walk. And he takes a first strike in the outer corner. Roberts at 323, five home runs, 24 RBIs. Originally thought to be the guy that would replace Cal Ripken Jr. at shortstop. Spent more time in the minor leagues and has become an all-star second baseman. Fouls it the other way, staying close with that swing. He's down 0-2, and what will Cologne do with this one? Well, he showed him a couple off-speed pitches once again. Talked about pitch sequence in the beginning part of the game with Bart. He's going different sequence after different sequence to Brian Roberts, who's the hottest hitter on this Baltimore club. Not giving him the same look, which is important. I would go fastball up right here, see if he can swing it, get it out of the strike zone. Jose Molina behind the plate, giving the signs all in two. There's one out. 
And missing away is Cologne. A little bit of a recoil. Recoiling happens in what situations? Well, what it does is that it doesn't allow you to reach all the way out, too. When you recoil like that, you don't have your better velocity on the ball. You want to reach out like you want to try to touch the catcher's mid. That gives you better velocity, better location. One and two from Cologne. Six wins, three losses. 5.9 ERA. This is his 13th start. Robert stays alive, fouls it back. That was that fastball up, trying to make the swing, change the eye level. Now it's to pull something down and away, either the fastball or the changeup on the outside corner. Alone already surpassing the amount of starts he had last season when he went 1-5 and five with a 5.11 ERA. And then having the partial tear of his rotator cuff, rehab, extremely hard throughout the offseason, but only made 10 starts for the Angels last season. Is missing outside on Roberts two and two. Well, when you think about it, what four games out last year, and only get one win out of Bartolo Colon, show, shows you how good of a job everybody else responded around him in that rotation, and of course the the offense responded in the second half. I'm talking about Colon and how much he suffered through that. He actually did not even want to come near the clubhouse at times because he couldn't pitch. Going as Payton and foul by Roberts. The Angels will be trying to win the series tonight as the A's have won. Yeah, the A's won in New York, but Seattle won six games in a row. They keep staying in the race. They can swing the bat. It's going to be coming down to how deep and effective that starting rotation is for Seattle if they're going to be able to stay in the race. Let's talk about guys that have done an outstanding job. How about for the Oakland A's? Chad Goldon, masterful throughout the whole year. They just got back Rich Harden. Payton goes again and another foul ball. So the Oakland A's also with a lot of depth at some point you know they're going to make their move. Yeah, they have the best record with baseball in the last six, seven years when it comes to the second half of the season. And go down, you mentioned one hitter today against the Yankees, which is incredible when you think about that lineup they throw at you. Hart doing a good job. Here we are into the fifth inning with 80 pitches. Effectively working the strike zone. Not as deep and in perfect command as he wants with 30 through 33 balls. But other than that, very good. We've seen consistency with Bartolo Colon on finishing the pitches lower. He made 103 pitches through six innings in his last start. There goes Payton again. And line it out to left field for a base in his Roberts. Payton, even though he took off, he will stop at second base and quickly. Nick no gets a reputation. Well, no wonder he just threw somebody out at home plate. Yeah, a lot of times when, you, when you're going on a pitch like that, and a good pitch by Bartolo Colon, and Roberts did a nice job of slapping the ball in the left field. And Jay Payton was already basically at second base, but Gourneau, with that reputation already, with a strong arm, stops him. Nice approach by Ryan Roberts as far as the swing, but better approach by Gourneau attacking the baseball, making sure he can keep it first and second where a ground ball he can still get out of the inning. And here's a huge difference in philosophies as Mike Butcher will visit the mound and talk to catcher Jose Molina and Bartolo Colon. Angels players usually in that situation will keep going all the way to third and expect a perfect throw. Yeah, if you look at the, the Angels, which has been a big part of their success, the first 15 games, it started the ERA, 3-4-6 at 9-2 record. But the last 10 games at 1-4 with an ERA almost at 6. Bartolo Colon going very well so far. The key point in the game to be able to keep it close. And trying to keep it close is Colon with the help of Mike Butcher. He returns to the dugout. His catcher, Jose Molina, and his defense looking for a double play. The Angels have turned 84 double plays so far this year. Fahey is one for two. Slow roller left side. Cabrera, tough play. Gets rid of it, and they'll get him at first in a tight play. A nice play by Orlando Cabrera for out number two, and the Colombian just keeps shining. Nice play by Orlando Cabrera. Mind you, a lot of uh, Fernandez, when he was able to make the strong throw on the move like that, he'll just get the base runner, knows when he has to get that little bit extra on the throw, and Trembley's not real happy about the call there at first base, but. Good play by Orlando Cabrera to be able to nip. That was a tough, tough play on a slow hopper. Faye runs down the baseline pretty good from the left side. The interim manager for the 
the Baltimore Orioles replacing Sam Peloso. A 5 and 4 record and a man that really understands and appreciates the importance of base running. Dave Trembling never played professional baseball. How about that? Wait, hey, what? He's got a ton of energy. I'll tell you, talking to him yesterday. Has a passion for the game and certainly has a passion for this play here at first base in which he's making his point, which he thought the wrong call was made. And he is on the veteran umpire, Jerry Davis. Slow little chopper, Orlando Cabrera makes a nice play, strong throw across the diamond. Angels look like they got the benefit of the call right there. Faye got down the line very quick. Trembley had it a point, but he was called out. And Trembley managing where the passion and the players say he has brought something different. A lot of energy to this ball club. Pilar swings and fouls it back. We're here, the foot's on the bag, ball's not quite in Casey Kotschman's glove, but Casey Kotschman doing a good job too of reaching out, already bringing the foot off, selling it. Don Mattingly did an unbelievable job with that. Wally Joyner, very good of pulling the leg off and getting the benefit of the doubt in the call. Well, comes with experience. Casey Kotschman has been playing with like a 10-year veteran at first base all season. Wave against Millar, he is down 0-2. For, for the Orioles, there's a lot of speed. Payton at third base. Ryan Roberts at second. Millar, all for one, and he is down all in two. Orioles leading 1 0 here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Much contrast to the game yesterday. Just reaching and staying alive is Millar. As Cologne pumps a 92 mile an hour fastball, and the count stays the same. Good, good fastball by Bartoglu, and well located. Nice job by Millar fighting that off. And no matter how a game goes during the course of, the, of, a, of a ball game, a pitcher is in a key point. This is a key point for Bart, and Millar's had a lot of success with runners in scoring position with two outs with that 385 batting average. So it's a, it's a key spot for Bart, especially ahead like his expand the strike zone. He's been tough at 0 and 2, and here he is again. Just missing outside, has not been getting that call all night, and Cologne knows it. All right, good pitch by Bartolo Cologne. Just maybe about an inch or two off. Good job by Millar not swinging that, but that was a good quality pitch. When you're a head like that, you can afford to do that. One and two now to Kevin Millar. Bartolo will take a little extra time now and be sure that what he's seen from Jose Molina is what he wants to throw right here. Yeah, Bart's been looking at his thumb a little bit every once in a while just to make sure there's not a, a blister or something. Usually there's a callus build up on your thumb from throwing because of all the friction from the seams of a baseball on your thumb. You're going to get more of a callus. So it looks like he's going to be okay. They want to be on the same page as far as what pitch they're going to try to get Millar out with. Yes, and you do see Cologne as many other pitchers around the big leagues covering their lips with their glove. And <laughs> with so many people speaking Spanish nowadays, somebody somewhere in that video will pick that up. I never did that in my entire career, Jose. I never talked into my glove. I was afraid it would talk back to me. That's probably why. It just took one guy to do it. <laughs> Damn this Millar. He stays alive one and two. It's like the uh, the finger guard. You never saw that before either, right? No. The protector there on the glove? No. I, you know, but it's one of those deals where it's comfort. It's whether you feel like no, somebody's going to look at your signs or not. But Bartolo Colon aggressively attacking the strike zone. Good pitch by Millar. The last one. One and two from Colon. Big time for him. Check swing. He is showing some very good stuff this at bat to Kevin Millar. One and two. A nice slider too. Good tight slider by Bartolo Colon and Millar's fighting off some tough ones. Something about Millar always has that flair for the dramatics. So you got to make a good pitch to be able to get him out here. Colon on the road, four wins, one loss. Six and three overall. He likes what he sees from Jose Molina on the one and two pitch. Here it is. Reaching to right center field. It'll drop for a base hit. 
It'll bring Payton. It'll bring Roberts. A two-run single for Kevin Millar. 3-0 Baltimore. A couple RBIs so far for Baltimore have been quality pitches by Bartolo Colon. Fights it off. Puts it in the outfield. After Bart threw him some great quality pitches. Trying to get him to swing at some balls out of the strike zone. Foul off tough pitch after tough pitch. Good pitch there, too. Even better at bat for Millar. He fights it off and hits it in the right center field for a base hit. Drives in two. Melvin Mora, same approach. Happened with the first run of the ball game in the fourth inning. Also with two outs. Got jammed and got it right in front of him where nobody is. This time, no contesting. Line drive base hit by Ramon Hernandez. So four hits in the inning for the O's against Bartolo Colon, who has thrown 25 pitches so far here in the fifth. Mike Butcher getting on the phone now to call down to the bullpen. Bartolo Colon got to regroup here a little bit. Fastball, middle part of the plate. Hernandez fights it off, goes the other way. Good approach, but Hector Carrasco looks like he's going to get up for the Angels. As Bartolo Colon tries to battle his way through the inning. He retired the first Orioles, the first eight Orioles before he singled. He punt single by Corey Patterson. And now the man hit for the cycle last night, Aubrey Huff, 0 for 2 tonight. Steps in with man at first and second. And there's a the strike from Bartolo. Smart pitch. He had their couple fastballs in a row they had good swings at. Came back with a backdoor slider. It's a little bit of a different look for Bart against Huff here. Smart pitch. Infielders in a knock it down mode. Here's the 0-1. Oh, All in two. Well, these guys, most of the lefties guessing in one direction. And that is looking for the two-seam fastball inside, and he's been able to paint outside. Gotta get yourself in position now. Way ahead with Millar and Hernandez not a lot blessed with a ton of speed on the base, so you gotta make a good pitch to be able to get out of the inning. Spin by Cologne, trying to pump it out just a little bit more with that fastball missing. One and two. Angels on the road, 21 and 17 at home, 29 and 13. Orioles at home, 18 and 20. On the road, the O's are 16 and 24. Here's the pitch by Bartolo, and he will get him finally with that two seamer. Two Orioles are stranded. Three to nothing. Orioles after five. Most vehicles can help protect you during an accident. We prefer to help you avoid one altogether. The 2008 Lexus RX with 14 actively safe features. See your Southern California Lexus dealer. What if all those abandoned coins banded together? Think how they would add up. With Keep the Change, every purchase you make with your Bank of America Visa check card is rounded up to the next dollar. And all that glorious change is transferred from your checking to your savings. So if you wish you could save more money, now's your opportunity. Bank of America. The world's first blind spot sensor sees what Alex can't. A collision warning system with brake support senses what Jen doesn't. The world's first personal car communicator warns Kate if its heartbeat sensor detects an intruder. Introducing the all-new Volvo S80, a luxury car that protects the luxury of life. Lease a 2007 Volvo S80 for $399 a month for 24 months. $49.04 due at signing. Feel the fury of the IFL tonight at 8 on My13. And for our Sharp Aquas, detail of the game. How about this by the young Nick Grinnell from left field? Yeah, great approach here, charging the baseball, getting himself in proper throwing position, throws a bullet in there to get Patterson, to Speedy Patterson, a good throw to Jose Molina. At that point, kept it a 0-0 game. And for Nick Grinnell, 28 years old, 
He is on deck for the Angels as Jose Molina. Grineau batting ninth and then the top of the order and Sean Figgins will try to figure something out against lefty Brian Burris. He has been a mystery to the Angels in his first two starts. Well, the good thing for the Halos, seven of the last ten victories have been comebacks. Six of those wins when they were trailing after six innings or later in the game. Molina takes down and has shown bunt twice now. He has <laughs> Melvin Mora racing <laughs> in. And Mora seems like he wants no part of playing inside. 2-0 to Jose Molina. Swings away, skies at the center field. A tough sky. As Patterson gets some help, he says he's got it. He does for the first out. Even 2-0. Burris is not giving in, not throwing the ball down the middle part of the plate. Spanning strikes on even going off the outside part of the plate, trying to get you to swing at a pitcher's pitch, and he's done a very good job of doing that so far tonight. Coming up a very bad start against Arizona, Arizona during interleague, 4 one third, allowing four hits. Four earned runs with five walks. It's Nick Grinnell, all for one, making his Major League debut. And looking for that first base hit. Takes downstairs. 2-0 for Grinnell. So Burris has fallen 2-0 to both Molina and now to Grinnell here this inning. Yeah, the thing is, he doesn't throw a ball down the middle part of the plate. He's still not going to give in no matter what. Side. That's exactly what you're talking about and what the Indians are trying to avoid now as they take a look at him for a second time and soon a third time. 3-0 to Nick Grinot. 3-0. Orioles. And there's a strike, a good hitting count for Nick Grinot. It reminds me a little bit of former Oriole and former Mariner Philly now, Jamie Moyer, which is always going to pitch off the outside part of the plate. Similar stature on the mound, too. There's a walk, and Grinot is aboard for the first time in his young big league career. Draws a walk. It's even one of those spots you're up 3-0, 3-1 count, and you're still not going to center ball middle part of the plate. And that's the way his, his approach is, and he's not varying from it no matter what. So Grinot is at first. It's Sean Figgins who started the game with a line drive single up the middle. Then got doubled up on a fly ball by Guerrero. And it was a very promising start for the Angels as Figgins did not get a chance to run. And Burris has gotten stronger and stronger, and the Angels at this point just looking for that mistake to pile it on. Doing our infinity facts, Sean Figgins, and the month of June has been spectacular. 460 batting hours, 14 steals, 52 hits, including that 6-for-6 six six game against Houston, which he Tied it and won that game late in the ball game. He in the big leagues with a 460. Stays inside that pitch, fouls it off. It always amazing when you think about it. A lot of times you see guys hit 450, 460 for six, seven games, but for the whole month, it's the last day of the, of the month of June and 464 batting average. That's phenomenal. Keeping it very simple, Sean Figgins. Looking down, staying inside the ball. Looking down has helped him a lot in not chasing high pitches, not reaching up, obviously, with the hands, but also looking down more has helped him lay off certain pitches that, as you mentioned before, he had a tendency to swing a lot of. Yeah, it's that level head on your shoulders. If you move your eyes back and forth a lot, you're going to swing the pitches out of the strike zone. He's looking down and keeping that head and eyes focused the whole time. He leads with that front shoulder. On the two and one. There it is again. Takes a good look at it. Three and one. What well, is it? This is spot right now if you're Burris. Three one count. If any time you're going to center a ball, try to get a, a fastball middle part of the plate, this is the time. Although his pattern said he won't do that, but this is the perfect time for him to try that and try to get lucky. Maybe get a ball hit at somebody. Three one to Figgins. Just gets the outside corner now, 3-2 count. It's his favorite count. He got that batting average under 100. 083 coming into the game, and here he is once again at the 3-2 count. A couple walks already on it. 
Cornell doesn't go. And Pickens goes the other way. Foul. We've seen the Angels do it many, many times. All of a sudden, Mickey Hatcher, Angels hitting instructor. Just the one simple reminder. And sometimes the reminder is, let him make the mistake. Hey, still down by three. If you help that pitcher out, Mike Sucha knows all about this as a former catcher. Piggins whacks it to right center field. Hayden not able to cut it off, and here comes Nick Gurno, and Figgins will follow him as the Angels get on the board. An RBI triple for Sean Figgins, and Nick Gurno scores his first major league run. 3-1 to one now, cut the lead by Sean Figgins in that triple. Perfect approach. We talked about his left-handed swing going the other way. The right-handed swing, the same thing. Kept that head level. Drives the ball to right center field. Unable to cut it off, Jay Payton gets through there. Perfect swing, level swing, level eye level. Drives the ball the other way for Sean Figgins. Showing the speed, easily getting in for a triple. Not only getting closer, but he represents the run to be able within one run of tying the ball game. Figgins two for three. And Nick Grinnell racing around. Made it look very easy. Here's coming at him. Taking down and one tendency for the youngster Brian Burris, the 26-year-old, is five wild pitches. Had a tendency of being wild down also in the minor leagues. That was pretty close too. Hernandez did a good job of blocking that pitch. Turned it over a little bit too much, that change up and way out in front of the plate. And he works from the stretch on Cabrera, who was 0 for 1 with a walk. Herbo whack now to left field. This would also find the foot of the wall. Scoring easily is Figgins, and Cabrera has the Angels within a run with an RBI double. Three to two Orioles. All set up by Sean Figgins with that tremendous at bat. Triples in the right center field on a 3-2 count. Then Orlando Cabrera once again coming through with the man on third. That break a ball, able to get his hands back in time, and drives that ball to left field for the double. One hops the ball. And... The reminder by Mickey Hatcher is he is in trouble. Let him figure it out. And the Angels do a nice job at just figuring this guy out. Angels fans, did you miss seeing your first place Angels in action during the last homestead? Well, we have great news for you. The Angels will be back at the Big A following the All-Star break for an exciting three-game series against the Rangers beginning Friday, July 13th. Enjoy your summer with friends and family while cheering the Angels unto another Ayo West title. Tickets start at just $9 for adults and $5 for kids, and they can be purchased at angelsbaseball.com or at the Angel Stadium ticket office. Many, many opportunities. As we know, July rolls around, Mark, and it's time to count down. Vladi fouls it back, and there is a mighty swing by Vladi. Boy. Well, he's got to be looking away. Burst has got a mantle. Fastball's away. About a couple inches off the outside part of the plate. So Vlad's got to look away. Your RBI guy's up there is Baltimore. People up in a hurry. Burris is kind of falling apart here in the sixth inning. High and run at second base. Guerrero brushed back by a pitch. And Vladi today is 0 for 2. Has not hit the ball well. Hit it deep one time, but off the end of the bat. As he will try to square something here and bring Cabrera home. He just trailed by one. He's off a very good pitch by the pitcher. Now a 2-1 count. Yeah, that 1-0 pitch was all by design to throw fastball up and in just to make him aware of it. He's going to try to get him away. Vlad sticking the same thing. Look away and drive the ball the other way. Down again. Good job by Ramon Hernandez. 3-1 count now to Vladimir Guerrero as Gary Matthews waits on deck. And Cabrera having a good chat over there with second baseman Brian Roberts at second base. 3-1 for Vladimir Guerrero leading the Angels with 71 RBIs in second place in the American League. And Melvin Moore is making Burris aware that Vlad has tremendous play coverage. And Vlad's going to have to be patient up there. He's not going to throw him anything close to the strike zone. Just look away. If he gets that outside part of the plate, then you drive it. Otherwise, take the walk. 3-1 to Vladimir Guerrero. 
no part of Guerrero. He wanted that's another walk now for Burris. He has issued four. And the Angels put the potential go ahead run now at first base. A good at bat for Vladimir Guerrero. First and second now with only one out. Similar situation last time out for Burris. He was dealing through the first three innings when he allowed one hit. He had a 4 nothing lead, then it kind of fell apart for him. A bunch of extra base hits in a row after a walk. And that's what happens. Sometimes as a pitcher, you walk a key guy, a couple extra base hit, lo and behold, you're out of the game. And that Orioles bullpen has been struggling. And not as of late, pretty much all season long. Gary Matthews, all for one. He has walked. Curveball. This is inside. Ball one. And this is where the Angels want to get in this position where you, it's battle of the bullpens in which the Angels have been so much more successful than the Orioles as far as bullpen work. And keep pecking away, pecking away, and all of a sudden you tie the game up and then take the lead, and that's where you have the advantage. Matthews chases the changeup. And it's one and one now to Gary Matthews. The Angels looking at Burns for a third time. A triple by Figgins. A double by Cabrera. A walk by Vladi Guerrero. Millar will do it himself at first base as the runners move to second and third. And a good pitch inside by Burris gets Matthews jammed. There's now two down. This is where it comes into play as a pitcher. You've had some wild pitches so far this year. Five of them you mentioned earlier, Jose. That takes away that pitch from Burris. Now, as you think in your mind, that's a tying run at third base. I may not throw that slider down in the dirt, that change up in the dirt, because it might get away and we have a tie game. Here's Rob Quinlan. Hit the ball very hard. His last time bound, he landed to the shortstop. All for two. Strike for Rob Quinlan. Time run at third, go ahead run at second. Quinlan getting the start today as a designated hitter. 300 career average against left handers. And a prime spot here for the Angels. Swings and misses right over the top of that one. 0 and 2. Now 0 and 2, the strike zone is now expanded for Burris. And Bob Quinlan's got to shorten up the swing a little bit, think more of the approach the other way, just to put the ball in play and see what happens. The Angels have scored twice this sitting after going scoreless through five. Two aboard, 0 and 2. Two outs. A wasted pitch by Burris. One and two count now. 28 pitches this inning for Brian Burris. Sean figures with that triple. Man, he's a machine. Well, now 53 hits in the month of June. No wonder he's smiling. One and two to Quinlan. Swings and misses. He goes down and the Angels lead two. They also scored two times. Three two O's. Good level swing. Sean Figgins ball up, drives it the other way, scores for no. Then Atlanta Cabrera, another pitch up, doubles in another run. They're close. Only the Nissan Titan has a Utilitrack cargo system and the longest crew cab bed in its class. Five in-bed notch channels, four cast metal tie-down cleats. You choose the tie-down points, you choose the angle. Because Nissan thinks when you put something in your bed, it should stay there. The new 2008 full-size Nissan Titan. The Titan of trucks. are available for select home games. Visit angelsbaseball.com for details. Angels Baseball, what a game. Even a full-size luxury SUV designed to embrace the driver should be a statement in refined amenities. Optional seating for eight and technology for everyone. The new QX56. 
exclusively with XM Satellite Radio with XM Nav Traffic and a complimentary three-year subscription for both from Infinity. The Angels on my 13 are sponsored by Nissan, who invites you to shift the way you move through the world. And by Sharp Aquas, bring the details home. Liam Mazzoni talks to his youngster, Brian Burns, as the Angels close up the gap. They only trail by one run as we move to the bottom of the sixth inning. Brian Burns through six has allowed only three hits. And the Angels have made every single hit mark really count. Really count a couple of key walks in that inning, too, allowed the Angels to get himself in position to be able not only get all the way back, but a possibility of taking the lead there before a quality pitch against Rob Quinlan. Melvin Mora got the O's on the board with an RBI single where he got jammed and fought it off and got the single to right center field in the fourth inning. His 41st RBI for Melvin Mora. A 262 hitter. He leads the Orioles with 12 home runs. And Mora, a big supporter of interim manager Dave Tremblay. He says this guy has brought so much energy that I think he deserves a three month shot to see what he can do. I think you do, especially a guy with that kind of enthusiasm. At this point in the season, the Orioles trying to get find their way back to where they were such a successful organization, and he's got the energy and the know-how to make this team turn it around. By Cologne, Cabrera is not going to be able to get down and get it. It'll roll to center field. Off Cologne, which changed direction, and more eyes aboard. Yeah, Bartolo Cologne usually does a good job of fielding his position. Slightly off balance and a ground ball up the middle against Melvin Moore. Reached back, touched it. If he doesn't touch that ball at all, it's up the middle easily anyhow. But the deflection gave Orlando Cabrera a little bit of a better chance. Up the middle, fall back, tried to reach back to make the play. Deflected slightly, but the change of direction on the ball, the spin was different for Orlando Cabrera. It absolutely makes a huge difference as an infielder. You have everything calculated, how much you're going to extend, how many steps you're going to take before you know it. Uh-oh. Instead of a fastball, there's a curveball. Jacob Evans will take outside. As a pitcher, that's your normal reaction to up the middle. You do look around and try to figure out where your middle infielders are playing, but that's just a natural reaction for a pitcher to try to make the play. Eight hits now for the Orioles, two for Mora. It's Gibbons stands in 0 for 2. The Angels looking for that ground ball, looking for that double play. Gibbons, two punch outs tonight. Takes outside and he keeps guessing inside on Cologne. Bartolo Cologne now up to that 100 pitch mark, but still good. Good velocity, good location. Hector Carrasco is up now in the bullpen for the Angels in case Bartolo Cologne falters a little bit. The stuff still seems to be there at 100 pitches. 8 103 in his last start at home against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Through six innings. This is away. Two one now to Jay Gibbons. A great mistake hitter. And at this ballpark, mistake, especially slow and up over the plate, could be very dangerous. Short distance to right field with that wall, even though it's 25 feet high. Only 318 down the right field line. Short left field, Renault playing perfectly, makes a catch for the first out of the inning. Good scouting there for the Angels who had Renault set up in a perfect spot. Nice off-speed pitch by Bartolo Colon as he communicates to Orlando Cabrera. If a comeback is to him, he's going to throw to him for that 1-6-3 double play. So it's all about communication, telling everybody where it's supposed to be, but it's the bottom line. you got to know as a pitcher, not only you're throwing the ball, but you also be able to talk to your infielders in case the ball's hit back at you. And Renault, for his major league at the U, has been very busy in left field. The native from Springfield, Massachusetts. And UMass. Former Angel, Gary DiSarcino. This drive is deep. Renault, again, a long run, makes a catch. And more returns. You know what, it's a good thing if the ball keeps finding you because you get looser and looser the more you see it, especially in your Major League debut. Yeah, good jump too by Corneau. Initially when that ball was hit, it looked like he was going to be able to go and drive it out of the ballpark because he just got just enough inside on Jay Payton to be able to keep it in the yard. And Corneau, good jump, makes a nice quality play 
as the friends go look in to make sure the base runner doesn't advance. Bruno has driven in as many as 108 runs, which he did in 2005 playing for Salt Lake City with 26 home runs. Even though he was only hitting 222 before, before getting called up, he had 10 home runs and 29 RBIs. Well deserved. Two down now for Colonna and Corey Patterson. Number nine hitter waves and misses. On that front, Garrett Anderson on rehab assignment now. And single at Rancho Cucamonga alongside Meister Sturz. They will be re-evaluated here fairly soon. And it's very possible that the Angels will have Garrett Anderson either in Texas or New York before the All-Star break. Nice pitch again by Bartolo Colon, trying to get that two-seamer to start in at the left-handers hit Patterson and catch the corner just barely off the plate. And guess who turns 35 today? G.A. Happy birthday, G.A. Happy birthday to Garrett Anderson. Getting healthy, and hopefully when he comes back, he is back to stay. Patterson again unable to make contact with Bartolo Colon. One and two counter for Colon, just a big pickup to be able to get to at least through six innings. That's going to be important for him, especially after the offense responded by getting two runs, getting all the way back in this ball game. It's your responsibility as a pitcher to throw up a zero to get the offense going once again. He needs it all right here. And just trailing only by one run as Colon goes to first base. Mora not close. I mean, Mora has plays against Cologne enough to understand we have not even seen him try to get even a good lead over at first. Yeah, he has seven stolen bases. When you're behind in the count here, it's not a bad idea to think more in the lines that Bart's going to throw maybe a slider so you get a better jump and try to steal the bag. A very conservative lead for Mora over there at first base. One and two count to Patterson. Two down. Going down is Patterson. Wow. Cologne blowing the fastball away. Another K. And we move on to the seventh, three, two, O's. See the hottest women in the country shake it up in the Hooters Dream Girl Challenge. Are you ready? <laughs> it's a totally revealing competition. Tuesday at 8 on Y13. My Accord sedan makes perfect sense for me. You know, I can say the same about my Accord Coupe. I think it's great gas mileage. You got that right. And you know Honda has the best resale value of anyone out there? Yes, it does. You mean we agree on everything? Well, I am kind of partial to bologna on my pizza. <sighs> Must be a guy thing. Yeah! Lease a Honda Accord for $1.99 a month for well-qualified customers. I signed up for car insurance on Progressive.com. I saved money, which was great, but they also have these local response vehicles. And if you're in an accident or need an estimate or whatever, a Progressive guy will come to you. And they're all over. I am a musician who's on the road a lot, so it's pretty cool that they'll come to me if my van, you know, gets pummeled by adoring fans. Or if I hit a pole. Progressive. Saving hundreds is just the beginning. Came out of nowhere. Seven climate control sensors. Dual door seals to reduce noise, even electrostatic filters to keep dust particles out. It's nice to know that no matter how bad it gets out here, it is continually nice in there. At Mercedes-Benz, we are always in a comfort zone. See your local authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer for a special lease offer through Mercedes-Benz Financial. IFL Battleground, tonight at 8 on My Network TV, Channel 13. 3-2 Baltimore. We move on to the top of the seventh inning. Bartolo Colon getting some congratulations and a nice finish for Colon. Boy, that was some great gas, too. Some cheese at the knees for Patterson. No chance in the outside part of the plate. Howie Kendrick just fouls one outside the third baseline. Kendrick trying to follow the pattern of his teammates. Getting a third look at Brian Burris. He is 0 for 2. A strikeout and a ground out to the shortstop. 302 for the season for Howie Kendrick. Hits in on him. More up. Easy hop. We'll throw him out. One out. They're still making some quality pitches. Tough little hop for Melvin Moore with a strong throw. 
across the diamond. Saw Leo Mazzoni in between innings talking to Burr, say, hey, listen, let's get a little bit more aggressive in the strike zone. Then you expand it when you work ahead. There's a reason for that talk, too, I imagine, Mark, is we need more from you. <laughs> they have used that bullpen a whole lot lately. And a lot of times when you get the confidence in your pitching coach, that's what you want. Casey Koshman was out here earlier today taking batting practice of Mickey Hatcher, the hitting instructor for the Angels, wants to get him back to closing that front toe just a more, a little bit more. Rolls it foul down the right side. Still having a tough time coming back from missing those seven games and that timing just thrown off now. He was so hot prior to that. He's crushing a ball. Last road trip alone, he had 467. Now all of a sudden coming back in and Mickey had to try to get him back to where that swing was prior to the mild concussion on the throwback by Russell Martin in that series against the Dodgers. On one or one one to Koshman. He takes a strike. Kind of looking for the breaking ball. One and two now for Casey Koshman. Burr settling in, looking outside. Will Hernandez, and he'll bounce one. Ramon Hernandez, to me, does not get the credit deserved. I mean, this is a young catcher that developed with him. Guys like a Tim Hudson, a Barry Zito, a Mark Mulder. I mean, for many years, he was a the guy they wanted behind the plate, and he did it with the Oakland A's. Boy, well, he does a good job of slowing down the running game and, and calling the game. You see him shaking his head what he wants there. Inside, he was telling me today, the, the thing about catching guys like Zito, Mulder, Hudson was, we had a flow, we talked before the game, but they were able to adapt during the game. That's when you have a confidence in what the sign the catch is going to throw down for you. And getting back to why, why he saw him shaking his head, why he's doing that, he's putting down a fastball, and he wants you to shake your head so you think some other kind of pitch is coming up. Most times a pitcher will always shake off a fastball to go to an all-speed pitch. Here he just put the fastball down and tell him to shake his head and stayed with the fastball. Well, it worked. 3-2. Sky to right field. Racing in is Peyton. He's got it for the second out. Hey, kids, ever wanted to run the show at an Angels game? Well, now you can by entering the fifth annual Kids Run the Show sweepstakes on Sunday, July 29th, as the Angels take on the Tigers. Fans between the ages of 5 through 18 can enter for a chance to win one of many Angels fantasy baseball prizes, such as honorary bat kid, guest PA announcer, guest Raider broadcaster, and more. All entries must be postmarked by July 9th. Entry forms are currently available on the fan forum page at angelsbaseball.com. You know, it's all about you kids. Of course it is. It's a beautiful thing, all the faces all around the ballpark, wherever the Angels are visiting. It's Jose Molina with two outs. We'll take big hack here, one and oh. He's way ahead of this one, one and one. Yeah, you'd love to be able to see Jose get his first home run of the year, but first is very difficult to be able to hit out. He's only given up four home runs and 63 plus innings so far this year. The reason why, you gotta generate all the bat speed yourself because he's always changing speed. So you gotta center one and be able to really drive to get it out of there. Two down for the Angels, they trail by only one run. Looking for another comeback. Outside for Jose Molina, stands at 237. Looking for his first home run of the season. Five runs batted in. Rounded up to the shorts up in the third and then flew out to center field in the sixth. Looking for that home run, he swings and misses. A big swing by Cheo Molina. Yeah, that was the one fastball he threw down the middle part of the play. Jose was not getting cheated on that one. Good swing, just got by him a little bit. That little extra zip at 87. Fouls it back, able to cut down his swing. Jose Molina staying alive, 2-2, two, two, two outs. And right now, the difference, a two-run single by Kevin Millar against Cologne in the fifth inning after two outs. Nate Grenoble anxiously waiting on deck. Good swing by Molina. Two and two. And the moment for a guy like Nick Grenoble making his debut in the big leagues. The moment for that first base hit, base hit as the game goes on gets bigger and bigger. Especially if Jose Molina gets on base here. He re represents the go-ahead run with one swing of the bat. You're absolutely right. He 
Molina giving Brian Burris one tough at bat here with two outs, nobody on in the top of the seventh inning. He goes down on strikes, one, two, three inning for the lefty. With our Jeep Dua, Roberts, Fahey, and Millar for Baltimore in the seventh. sets us apart. Now during the Chrysler Independence Day event, get 0% financing plus $500 bonus cash. Chrysler, engineered beautifully. Electronic stability program. Available rear liftgate speakers. Standard side curtain airbags. Full flat seats. And with an estimated 30 highway miles per gallon, you'll change the way you think about filling up. Now get the all-new Patriot for only $15,110 during the Jeep Independence Day event. When a guy can get halakahiki all over his Eopipi Iwila Ea, that's a good day, bro. The Hawaiian Teriyaki Burger with Grilled Pineapple. New at Carl's Jr. All California roads lead to Dodge Ram. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's on blacktop, the top of a mountain, or near the ocean, Dodge Ram is the longest lasting, most durable line of full size pickups. Get 0% APR for 60 months plus a thousand bonus cash or up to 6,000 in total cash allowances on Ram 1500 during the Independence Day event. Hey, Angels fans, it's summertime in Southern California, so take the whole family out for a day of fun in the sun with exciting Angels baseball. Every Sunday at the Big A is a McDonald's Family Sunday where kids can enjoy face painting, balloon artists, and arts and crafts in the family picnic zone, all while cheering the Angels onto another victory. The next McDonald's Family Sunday is July 15th against the Texas Rangers. Tickets start at just $9 for adults and $5 for kids, and those tickets can be purchased at angelsbaseball.com. Well, Brian Burris has retired the last five Angels in a row, and for him, absolutely, being stretched, I think it's prime right now. Well, the thing is, over that 100 pitch mark, but the way Baltimore's bullpen has been set up of late, they've been struggling, and you're going to see Trembley forcing him out, get him out there a little bit deeper in the game, because he has that look and the focus of still being in his ball game, even though he is over that century mark, and Hector Carrasco in there to try to keep the game close for the Halo series, been doing a little bit better job of late, important for him to get the confidence level back. Carrasco has spent a lot of time watching video the last couple of days, he says. And he attacked Roberts 0-1. Roberts, one for two. He has walked. He's been on base twice. There's something very typical for Brian Roberts as he stands in. Before the game, his on-base percentage was at 410. Missing down is Carrasco. Carrasco is, I mentioned, watching a lot of video. And for a reliever, you've got to pick your spots because you're not going to be able to say, hey, let, let me see the third inning. Let me see the sixth inning. Certain hitters. Certain hitters and certain pitch sequences allow you to get that confidence level back. Inside out swing. In front of Grinnell, this will drop. Roberts is aboard for the third time tonight here, leading up to seventh for the O's. Similar approach, he look at Sean Figgins, something away, break a ball in the back part of the plate. Stays down, a level swing, looks the other way for Brian Roberts. That's why coming in the last 10 games, hit well over 400 for the O's and continues that good swing the other way. Difficult pitcher to be able to try to get out. Such a good job of going the other way, Brian Roberts. Carrasco come into this, comes into this game having allowed a 185 average against lefties, but against righties. 319. He's trying to find that way to fool the right-handed batter. And here's an opportunity against a couple of lefties. 
And now Sean Figgins at third base will be looking for the sacrifice bunt off Brandon Fahey. Shows bunt and takes a strike. 0 and 1. If you're up there, you give it a sign to bunt. You don't pull the bat back, especially if it's the strike zone. Down, that pitch is very easy to go lay down for a bunt. So Fahey's got to get the down. It's Juan Samuel gives it the sign. Roscoe will go to first. A hard throw over there to the first base as Roberts gets back. The threat of the sacrifice. The hit run. Or the stolen base present right now against Carrasco and the Angels as they try to maintain this one run deficit here in the seventh inning. Three hits for the Angels, nine hits for the Orioles. Bonnet foul by Fahey, and he doesn't square up, and he is now down 0 and 2. Fahey on, that, on the fastball down. Sean Fick is playing tight at third base. Faye punching at the ball instead of letting the ball come back to the bat, play catch with it, put it down the line. You saw that barrel dropping. Sacrifice situation. He is bunting no matter what. Now Figgins will move back. And an 0-2. Figgins still looking for the bunt. Now no automatic bunt as it was 0-0 or 0-1. Swinging away and just foul. <laughs> oh, a lot of action over there down that line. That was real close. You got Sean Figgins still thinking about the possibility that that might be a bunt situation. Slaps the ball down the line, real close down the line. Good call. At third base, wow, that was awfully close. That ball was hit right on the nose. Mike Everett with the call, the right call, at third base. An eight-year veteran, Mike Everett, at third base. Mike Everett, member of the All-Star umpiring crew in 2006 at Pittsburgh. Owen two to Fahey Roberts at first. Swinging away, slow roller second. Kendrick will get them. Lead man on Roberts with a force out 4 6. You know you have to anticipate. You know who's running on both sides at first and the batter. Slow grass, take that sure out. Yeah, you got to go for the, the, the old sure out. You still got yourself in position to get out of the inning with a double play ball. But if you get the lead runner, you're still alive. Faye he runs down the well baseline well too, but Brian Roberts got 25 stolen bases to get him off the base pass. Well, you see a lot there, especially. In the minor leagues, as players with least experience will try to turn two before you know it, they start without the ball and they lose the ball, they have first and second. You end up rushing it too quick and make a, a bad throw to your shortstop. And key is getting that out. Now Hector can get another ground ball, preferably back at Howie Kendrick can flip it over to OC for another double play. Yeah, we talked so much about Kendrick and his bat, but he has played a solid second base for the Angels. He has made every play. 1 0 to Kevin Millar. He takes downstairs right now. Kevin Millar with the biggest at bat of the night. A two run single against Cologne on a two strike count in the fifth inning. Drove in those two runs that marked the difference. Payton scoring. And also Brian Roberts. Fahey's at first. Check swing foul. Well, and he fought up a couple tough pitches by Bartolo Colon. Fastball in on him, a couple fastballs away, slider away, just fought it off, fought it off. Got a pitch to hit, hit it in the right center field with his two RBIs. At one point, Kevin Millar thought he was heading over to Japan out of the Florida Marlins team. And before you know it, he is a Boston Red Sox. Right after that, he is a world champion Boston Red Sox. Gets jammed in. That is a foul ball. Part of that whole cowboy up. Team ahead working there with the Boston Red Sox. Finally getting over the hump down 3-0. 
gets Yankees in the ALCS. Come all the way back, went the four in a row, and went four in a row against the Cardinals to win their first world championship in a seem to be a zillion years for the Red Sox. Two one count to Kevin Millar. If you think about doubling up, there's a good guy as Carrasco will try to keep the ball down and get the ground ball double play. Pulled. A foul. Way up there. And it's now a 2 2 count to Kevin Millar. It is a spot where you see Hector Carrasco struggle a little bit against right handed batters. You need that slider, that tight, quick slider at the end to be able to get the right handers off balance. And Hector's had a tough time with that pitch so far this year. Mike Butch has been working with him, trying to get on top to have a better break on that. And that job as a pitching instructor and teacher never ends. 2 2 to Millar. Jose Molina does a nice job keeping it in front of him. We'll have a 3 2 count and anticipating interim manager trembling, sending Brandon Fay from first base. That was that slider, too. It, uh, Hector overthrew a little bit. That's why he had that late break, but unable to get Millar to swing out of the strike zone with it. And Jose Molina unable to convince Hector Carrasco on what pitch to throw. Preferably, also experience tells you, just pay the visit. Yeah. A lot of times a, a catcher behind the play has a field during the course of a game would have hit her seen well. And he put down the, the two for the breaking ball. But Carrasco wanted to go with the fastball in that spot. But Jose wanted to make sure they were on the same page, get that confidence level to make the quality pitch. Mike Soldier flashing his signs to Jose Molina. And they're picking over at first base. All this helps him so many ways in not allowing that guy at first base to get a good jump when he sees you come over. Especially 3-2. Most times you're going to be going on this situation. There he goes. Full foul again. Now Millar frustrated breaks his bat. He'll get some new wood. See Millar do this before. Now he's doing it against Carrasco. He did it against Bartolo Colon. Yeah, I, I never liked it when I was making my quality pitches and a, and a batter keeps fighting off the tough ones because it never be against you in your mind that you're going to end up making a mistake. When you make those quality pitches, you want it out. You fight it off, fight it off. Wade Boggs was very good at that. And then finally you center ball, middle part of the plate, and it gets hit well. The best friend for Hector Carrasco right there. He was able to take some off of that fastball. And Millar was way ahead of it. Another 3-2, Fahey running. Upstairs, ball four. So Millar again wins the battle as Carrasso issues a walk. And it'll be first and second here for the cleanup hitter, Ramon Hernandez. It's amazing what Millar has done. He's had a six-pitch at bat, a seven-pitch at bat, an eight-pitch at bat. Now here works another walk. He's got a good idea of the strike zone, fights off some tough pitches. That's why he's here at first base and came through with a key hit in the game so far for the O's. Carrasco wants to make sure he is working with that middleman at shortstop Orlando Cabrera on the comebacker. Ramon Hernandez is one for three. Taking down. And again, another visit by Jose Molina. And what could this one be about? Well, to make sure he you know, you got to challenge hitters. You know, you know he's, he's trying to work around the strikes on the and going out for him. Trust the movement on the fastball that's going to be able to get people out. And, Carrasco is an important part of this bullpen with Justin Spire being out. Mike Butcher realizes this, that they need some other help down in the bullpen as the starters are in this little period of time in which they've struggled to go deeper into games. 26,235 fans getting anxious with every single visit to the mound by an angel. As Jose Molina tries to slow everything down for Hector Carrasco. Missing a spot now, 2-0. The release point's not there for Hector Carrasco. He's, he's trying to force the issue. Instead of trusting his mechanics, that he's going to be able to get over the pitching rubber and, and throw a quality pitch. It's Mike, Bo Mike Socia looking on, Mike Butcher's looking on, trying to figure out what is going on with the release point for Hector. Bartolo Colon found his release point. Quality start for Colon. Three runs, 
through six innings. Carrasco working his first inning. 2 0. Oh. Deep to right center field. Matthews will look up. And this one is home run, a three run homer for Ramon Hernandez. And this will give the Orioles a comfortable 6 to 2 lead here in the seventh inning. Said it time and time again, when you're behind in the count, you make every hitter much, much better, much more comfortable. Because then you're forced in a situation you got to groove a fastball middle part of the plate. And Hector, just the confidence level is not there for him right now to go out and challenge hitters, fall behind, and not make it quality pitches. And this pitch right here, fastball right down the heart of the plate. Ramon Hernandez got good power the other way, drives this over that 373 sign for a three run shot. Roscoe delivers outside to Aubrey Huff. He was talking to Ramon Hernandez extensively before the game, and he says, well, you know, hitting the ball hard is one thing. Where they land is another. He goes, I'm going to just concentrate on hitting the ball hard because he goes, I am tired of thinking. I can't direct the ball. Well, the direction of that last one, out of here home run for Hernandez, his fourth of the year. And he now has 32 RBI. Shot that traveled 385 feet for Ramon Hernandez. No saying a lot of times you get yourself out by thinking too much at the plate. And Ramon is a quality hitter, but he's trying to think too much. And as a catcher, you think so much in line with the pitcher. 6-2 Orioles. Aubrey Huff fouls it off. Ten hits now for Baltimore. Three for the Angels. And the Angels came very close. And now they trail by four runs. Opportunities are ahead of them. Oh, four for three. He stays alive, fouling it off. Really comes down with Carrasco with the righties hitting so well against him. It seems like they're not afraid of him coming inside. Inside, it doesn't have that finishing pitch, the breaking ball, or even a split finger to be able to get him out. Just the confidence to be able to throw that pitch at the outside corner. Fernandez diving all over that pitch, drove it to right center field. He misses downstairs on Aubrey Huff. 3-2 now. Waiting on deck is Melvin Moto. Great to have you with us. Jose Moto alongside Mark Gubiza. And tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. early, John Lackey takes the mound against Jeremy Guthrie. Down on strikes is Aubrey Huff. Good change up by there by Hector Carrasco. But you mentioned the fact that when you're, when you're always, especially against right-handed batters, where he threw that good change up out in front, Aubrey Huff. Right-handed batters comfortable looking away, looking away, never changing that eye level where you come inside and back them off. You have to do that on occasion to be able to get somebody out on the outside corner. So John Lackey tomorrow goes to the mound for the Angels 10 and 5 against Jeremy Guthrie. He has been a sensation for Baltimore. He is 4-1. A 2.45 ERA for Guthrie, a 2.99 ERA for Angels ace, John Lackey. Great pitching matchup. And Getting back to our point about the swing, Melvin Moore had a great swing on that first pitch on the outside part because he's looking away on him. You have to go inside right here, Hector, to be effective against right-handed batters. Moore has been diving all night long. The more you dive, the more you become susceptible to what? Even a mediocre inside fastball. Yep. You just can't get around. Looking outside, coming inside, look what happens. Hey, that ball was designed to be on the outside part of the plate, but it ran in on him, and so you could tell he was looking out. He was diving out over the plate, Melvin Moore unable to stop his swing. Jose sitting up away, the ball ran inside, and still jams him because of the fact that he was looking away. That's what's so important about going inside at some point, throwing it at bat. Setting away again is Molina, and this will be sky deep to left center field. A long run for Nick Grinnell. He will not be able to get it as it goes over the wall for a ground rule double for Melvin Mora. Good drive by Nick Grinnell, and that ball to left center field, the deepest part of the ballpark. 
here in the Camden Yards, but Melvin Moore again looking away, looking away. This is a good quality pitch down, but when you're looking away, you're not backed off the plate. You have better plate coverage on the outside part of the plate. Drives it for a ground roll double. Just a tremendous effort. Good hustle by Nick Rono, but unable to make the play. Ground roll double. We have seen that all night long for Nick Grano. Medikin an outstanding throw in throwing out Patterson in the third inning. Threw it on the line from left field to home plate. Full out effort running the bases, even on the pop up to the infield. With two outs, there's a minute second base. And grounded second base by Jay Gibbons. Kendrick will throw him out, but the O's score three times. And after seven full innings, 6-2, to two, Baltimore. Monday on an all-new IFL Battleground. Can the lawyer take down the philosopher with these fists of justice? Encore tonight at 8 on My13. It's the Ford 4th of July Sellathon, and you won't believe the fireworks. Get 0% financing on every 2007 Ford car, truck, and SUV. That's 0% on Focus, Fusion, even Mustang and Edge. And on every Ford truck and SUV, get 0% plus over $2,000 bonus cash, even on the best-selling F-150 and Super Duty. Hurry in and save big at the Ford 4th of July Celathon. It's gonna be a blast. Okay, listen up, this is big. We have just launched the first 100% sirloin burger in fast food history. Take a look. That's 100% ground sirloin seasoned while it cooks. People can choose what kind of cheese and onions they want, but it's the sirloin that has to be tasted to be believed. Now, for those of you not from Texas, that's the sirloin area. Jack, our competitors serve Angus burgers. Could you point to the Angus area? I'd rather not. Introducing the Nissan Altima Hybrid. With 42 miles per gallon and 198 horsepower, it's the only hybrid that drives like a Nissan. Yup, it's that good. Get 0.7% APR financing on every Altima at your Nissan dealer now. Feel the fury of the IFL tonight at 8 on My13. Looking at our Jack in the Box game summary, Orioles leading the Angels 6-2, and Ramon Hernandez so far with a big blow, three-run homer in the seventh inning. Yeah, big shot as it scored at that point, 3-2, the Angels way back in the game. Bartolo Colon, quality start, three earned runs in six innings, six strikeouts, very good job. And Ryan Burris is the big key right here, seven innings so far with only three hits. Changing speeds, working inside-outside, keeping it down. We have Chris Gomez now at first base for the Orioles. Nick Markakis in right field. And Jay Payton moves from right field to left field. So Jay Gibbons out of the game. Ryan Burris continues on the mound. A big swing for Nick Grinnell looking for his first career base hit. Already scored his first run. Has his first walk, has his first assist. He has some putouts. But the one column you want, base hit. That's right, right. Here. that's right. Missing inside is Bird. So far, Bernal sky to the first baseman in the third inning. Walked and scored in the sixth inning. Ryan Bird goes outside. He just doesn't give in no matter what. It's amazing. Even with a 6-2 lead, 2-1 count, he's not going to center a fastball. He's going to go to the outside part of the plate, see if you're aggressive as a hitter and you swing at it. Got to give him credit for that. East and west in the strike zone. There is a strike. 3-2 now. I think that was a little bit of the rookie strike zone right there. Yeah, that was a gift. That ball was clearly off the outside part of the plate. Now 3-2 count once again for Brian Burris. Good swing by Granola, stays right with that pitch, 3-2. Well, Sean Figgins had success in that 1-3-2 count where he tripled to get the Angels back in the game at that point, make it 3-1, then scored. He's on deck now as they try to mount a comeback once again. Grounded the third, a high hop for Melvin Moore. 
And he throws him out for the first out here in the eighth inning. Work quickly as a pitcher, you're going to get some nice quality defensive plays. And Melvin Moore got himself in position, strong throw across the diamond. Nick Ono runs pretty well, able to get him out by a step. Sure, you talk about pitchers getting behind the ball, but Melvin Moore, what we notice is he saw the high hopper. Instead of playing it from the outside in, he got around that to make sure his feet are set. Got right behind that. There's a strike to Sean Figgins. And getting the momentum going towards your throw, towards first base. It's a, a good job by Melvin Moore. Yes, it looks like an easy hop and everything, but those are hops that in the big leagues you feel you should have the out. Biggins totally full on that pitch, and he is down 0 2. Biggins single and a triple. His average at 327. One home run, 23 RBIs. Led off the game with a single. And an RBI triple in the sixth inning. Here's the 0 2 on Figgins. He stays alive, felling it. Most of his left foot. It's amazing. This is not that long ago. We're talking about his batting average at 133. That's almost an increase of 200 points. I mean, when you think during the course of the season how hard that is to be able to do that, but Sean Figgins with that approach the other way, it's the perfect swing. He's going down because Burr is just totally just very some great breaking ball. On Figgins, unable to catch up, and there's two down for the Angels. Tough pitch layoff for Sean Figgins, especially when you're behind in the count here. A slider down and in on him. Best he can do is try to foul that ball off. Good quick break at the very end. Sean Figgins unable to do anything with that, although he's been seeing the ball well all night. Back for Figgins, nine multi-hit games in the 12-game hitting streak. Not shabby at all as Cabrera takes upstairs. Three hits for the Angels, 11 for the Orioles. Second game of the series. Tomorrow we will be at FSN West. John Lackey against Jeremy Guthrie. Lando Cabrera, one for two, an RBI double. Also a walk, a 340 average for Orlando. Hard hit ball up the middle, base hit. He's been hot, and he's been aboard three times tonight. Cabrera at first will bring up Vladimir Guerrero. Great approach by OC going right up the middle with this. When you have a guy throwing a lot of off speed stuff, you got to think of the line. The other way or up the middle, you try to pull it, that's when you get the choppers to third base, but good level swing up the middle, head down on the ball, level, base hit for Orlando Cabrera. And Cabrera able to adjust. He was totally fooled his first at bat when he hit the soft liner after the end of the bat to the second baseman. Roberts insists then the walk, the double now, the single up the middle. Vladimir waits and he takes ball one. Vladimir Burris has done a fine job pitching to him tonight. Which is not one pattern at all. Yeah, but with Vlad up there with a big fly, all of a sudden it's a six to four game, so he's got to be centered in a spot to try to hit it out of the bullpen. There's veteran Paul Shuey now in the Orioles bullpen. Hard hit, right center field. This will keep rolling. Cabrera around second. He'll be waved home. Guerrero to second base with an RBI double, and the Angels continue to close the gap on Burris. Guerrero with a 72nd RBI. Cabrera scoring. It is now 6 to 3. Yeah, that pitch got a lot of the play for Vladimir Guerrero. Good swing up the middle approach for Vlad. Didn't try to do too much, but hit this ball right on the nose. They're trying to go away. Middle part of the plate and up. Vlad brought his hands up, crushed his ball into right center field, unable to even score a run from first base on a well hit ball up the middle. The importance of good at bats with two outs is provided by Orlando Cabrera. It could be a single, it could be a walk, but the ability to get on base, especially with two outs, isn't there more pressure for a pitcher with two outs to get it done too? A lot of times you, you lose your focus a little bit when you get those two quick outs, and all of a sudden, you know, you get behind and, and, and a base hit, and then all of a sudden you look up, you got Vladimir Guerrero coming up, and like, uh-oh, they get way back in the game. We'll talk about coming up. Manager Dave Tremblay has made the signal and a call to the bullpen. And that'll be it for youngster Brian Burris. We'll be back. Even a full-size luxury SUV designed to embrace the driver should be a statement in refined amenities. 
optional seating for eight, and technology for everyone. The new QX56. Exclusively with XM satellite radio with XM nav traffic and a complimentary three-year subscription for both from Infinity. Gates is on. And here's the first number. Followed by number 31. We got two. Here comes huh. the third number. And here we go with another lucky We got pick. three. Followed by <laughs> number six. And here it is, California. Your final mega number is... Imagine what a buck could do. Super Lotto Plus from the California Lottery. You know how quiet the Ford Edge is? I know that you know it's pretty quiet. It's library quiet. The Edge is library quiet. Beat the Lexus RX 350 in a quiet test. How do you win a quiet test? Uh, you're being very quiet. That's how Edge won a quiet test. Quieter than a Lexus. Quieter. True story? True story. Spirit of a sports car, versatility of an SUV, the all-new Edge. The Angels closing now within three. They are losing six to three here with two outs. And Bennett standing at second base. A nice crowd on hand and a nice job by youngster Brian Burris. Seven and two-thirds. That is, so far this year, his longest outing. Yeah, we talked about the keys for him is going both sides of the plate. He did a very effective job of showing in, getting you out of the way, throwing that cut fastball in. The good cutter going throughout this game in a bunch of 3-2 counts in which he was successful once again. Veteran Paul Shuey takes to the mound. He has appeared in four games. 0-0 record. 3.86 ERA. Quite a story. Paul Shuey. He has been around and also there's stumbled. He hasn't been around. Incredible yeah. comeback story when you think about it. Came up with that Cleveland club and did a great job as their closer just a battle to stay healthy. Delivers to Matthews, ball one. He was the Cleveland Indians' number two overall pick in 1992 when he appeared in a game in San Diego on June 19th. That was his first big league appearance since September 28th of 2003. Talk about perseverance to come back, the will to want to play, put that uniform on and compete. Paul Shuey definitely has that. Injuries have always followed him. In fact, this season already, basically the first two weeks of the season with a strained right Achilles tendon. Suffered in spring training and also spent the first week of June on the disabled list with a strained right hamstring. Here he is delivering to Gary Matthews Jr. A favorable hitter's count, 2-0. Oh. Guerrero stands at second. There's a pitch that we haven't seen call strike all night, 2-1. and one. Yeah, that ball was off the outside part of the plate. Hernandez doing a good job of trying to frame this ball. This ball is about five, six inches off the plate. Brings it back in there and gets the benefit of the call. Nice job by Hernandez getting his pitcher to, to strike. Two more of the third baseman. A low throw picked up by the new first baseman, Gomez. And that defenseman pays dividends right away. The Angels trail by three. Civic. Reverse your thinking. Now get APR financing as low as 2.9% on all 2007 Civic models for well qualified buyers. Find out what it is in life that you don't do well. And then don't do that thing. Stay thirsty, my friends. Ordinary toothbrushes can't stand up to it. Oro B Triumph. Triumph's onboard computer and floss action brush head help give you cleaner teeth and healthier gums by your next checkup. Oral-B Triumph. Find out what it is in life that you don't do well. And then don't do that thing. Stay thirsty, my friends.
Introducing Infinity Acceleration Swell Technology, designed to unleash power in a way that feels virtually endless. The all-new 306 horsepower G from Infinity. Visit your Southern California Infinity retailer. This year, when you're not home to watch or listen to the Angels, check out MLB.TV, where you can watch every out-of-market game live. You can catch those you missed on demand or listen live to every radio broadcast. Sign up today for MLB.TV. For more details, visit AngelsBaseball.com, where baseball is always on. Mike Socha hoping to keep the deficit at three as the Angels go to bat in the ninth. And lefty Darren Oliver comes in to face the Orioles here in the bottom of the eighth. Yeah, at some point, Darren Oliver's got to get that confidence back, which he had last year pitching out of the bullpen for the Mets. Get ahead, finish him off with that opponent's batting average at 310. He's not able to do that so far once he gets ahead of the count. Well face Dave Payton. Grounds it to Oliver in one pitch. One out. Good start for Darren Oliver. Here in the eighth. And that'll bring up number nine hitter, Corey Patterson. Fielding your position, being in proper position when you throw the ball, release it. Nice play by Darren Earl for getting in front of it and making a nice little throw over to Casey Cox. Be sure to join us tomorrow as John Lackey takes the mound at 10.30 a.m. He goes against Jeremy Guthrie on FSN West, the last game of the series before the Angels have a day off on Monday and begin a three-game series against the Rangers in Arlington. Breaking ball strike for Corey Patterson. Got a beautiful bunt single with two outs in the third inning against Bartolo Colon. And then after that, struck out twice swinging against Bartolo Colon. Swings and misses as this one 0-2. It's a good time now being way ahead of the count for Darren Oliver to use that breaking ball. That's been the one pitch that he's had a tough time getting a feel for this year. To get rid of the left-handed batter by getting ahead like this and striking him out. He is way ahead at 0-2 now to Patterson. Got him on three pitches, so very economical so far. With only four pitches, Darren Oliver has recorded two outs. And Patterson's had a tough day today so far. So his strike zone has been a little bit too big for him. And three strikeouts already on the night for Corey Patterson. He's had a tough time. He had the base hit of first at bat and three straight strikeouts. If you're wondering for the Angels in the ninth, Rob Quinlan, Howie Kendrick, and Casey Koshman, five, six, and seven in Mike Socha's lineup. As Brian Roberts, a leadoff man, will turn around and go to Oliver. One, two, three on five pitches as the Angels come looking for a comeback in the ninth, trailing by three. Could you pull my car off, please? Silver SUV? Coming right up. Look at your car. I don't think reliable for that. Need a new truck? Get to GMC and transform your ride with great deals on most 07s. Like 0% APR financing plus $1,500 on every all-new 07 Sierra. Sale ends July 9th. More GMC trucks are sold in L.A. than anywhere in the nation. Knotts drops you, flips you, suspends you. Now Knotts takes you for a spin. New Sierra Sidewinder. Save $17 on adult tickets at Ralph's. Kids just $18.95. The world is advancing. Faster and faster. Are you in or out? Introducing the seven-passenger Acura MDX. Technology takes it to a whole new place. Acura. Advance. Soak up the high-speed drops, the non-stop waves, the four-story hands-on adventures. So come on, soak up the fun at Not Soak City. Adults save $7 at Ralph's. Kids just $16.95. The Angels on My13 are sponsored by your Southern California Dodge dealers. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge.
Angels, one more opportunity to get the job done as Darren Oliver gave them that opportunity with five pitches. He records all three outs in the eighth, and Rob Quinlan will step in against veteran Paul Shuey. Quinlan 0 for 3. He takes strike one, and Paul Shuey hoping to give that relief, where relief has not come for the O's this season. Quinlan down 0 2. Pretty surprising, too. This is a safe situation for Chris Ray with a three run lead. One out to get, but Paul Shuey given the opportunity now with the struggles of the bullpen to try to close it out. Staying alive is Quinlan, a 274 hitter. Rob Quinlan, three home runs, 14 RBIs. Infield playing to pull on Rob Quinlan. And he fouls it off. Remember those power days of Paul Shuey? It was gas and then nasty split finger. Yeah, he did. He, had to, he used to throw mid to the upper 90s, Paul Shuey, with that split, especially when he was able to throw both pitches starting at the knees. Tough to hit. Sky to right center field. Markakis, who came in as a defensive replacement, puts it away for the first down. This spot, all you want to do is get a couple base runners, give yourself a chance to tie it up with one swing of the bat. Howie Kendrick now to try to get his hit streak extended, get it up to 13, see if we get a base runner to put some pressure on Paul Shuey. Howie Kendrick, the Angels hero last night with a long home run to center field. We'll take the first strike. He is 0 for 3. Strike out, grounded out to short, grounded out to third. He is at an even 300. Side by Shuey. One and one. 26,235. Take advantage of beautiful weather here in Baltimore. Big swing by Howie Kendrick and good movement there by Paul Shuey. One and two. He had a transformation of a power pitch to more of a curveball sinker type pitch for Paul Shuey with still that good split. Another foul ball. Shuey is 36 years old, born in Lima, Ohio, and he played for Brian Roberts' father in college. There's a tie-in. Who would have thought? Roberts now playing second base. He delivers a ball to second baseman for the Angels, Howie Kendrick. Boy, everything's at the knees and then drops down below. you got to try it as a hitter, try to get him upward in the strike zone to get a better chance of hitting the ball hard. Down goes Kendrick, and there's two down. Shoe has come in with a purpose. That purpose has been to get out. He's done that. Another nice breaking ball. Backup variety down in the strike zone. Bounces it. Now with Kendrick, because he saw every single pitch starting at that knee level, it becomes more inviting as a hitter if you see everything down in that spot. Play for Mike Roberts of the University of North Carolina. Foul by Casey Cushman. Casey Cushman trying to find that groove. Angels only five hits. The Orioles with 11 hits. A big three run home run by Hernandez in the seventh makes the difference. That home run against Hector Carrasco. 1 1 to Casey Cushman. He has grounded out to second twice and flew out to right field. Boy, everything just start down. That instruction starting at the knees and ended up in the dirt with good late movement. Paul Shuey trying to get his first save in about five years. Ocker will stay alive and roll it foul towards first base coach Alfredo Griffin. Retires four batters that he faced when he came in the eighth inning. And the Orioles have tied the series with a 6-3 victory. Yeah, nice job by Paul Shuey. The bullpen, which has been such a, a, a sore spot for the Orioles. Paul Shuey comes in at this opportunity. 
good split finger down in the strike zone. Again, if you're a hitter, you see everything at the knees. You make that commitment, then the bottom drops out on that split. Paul Shuey, a great comeback story. Did a tremendous job for the O's bullpen. Baltimore, six runs, 11 hits, no errors. They left seven. The Angels, three runs, five hits, no errors. They leave four. We will be back with more here on Channel 13 right after this. So what's the rabbit got that the Civic does it? Uh, about 20 more features. Is like an MP3 jack? Yep. You've got power locks, air conditioning, four wheels. Start it again. <laughs> To a Volkswagen, it gets into you. Right now, get a 2007 Rabbit with automatic transmission for just $189 a month. Hey, Sarah. I'm Dale. <laughs> it's okay. I sell Hondas. Is this a good time or a bad time? Oh, oh. Great. Because right now, during Honda's helpful dealer days, you can get 2.9% APR financing on most Hondas. <laughs> that is low. What's this do? Oh! Ooh, good thing we're all wearing masks, huh? <laughs> Are you getting this? The odds the beaten path has been punched, kicked, and stomped on. 32 to 1. Stay well. The LR3, created for the one. The LR3 by Land Rover, designed for the extraordinary. We like to 10 on My Network TV, Channel 13. With an exhilarating 258 horsepower VTEC engine, an intelligent performance minded cockpit, double wishbone suspension, and true surround sound. All you need to do is get in. The TL from Acura. Take advantage of attractive financing on select Acura models for well qualified customers. What's that thing? It's a salad mobile. Next time we launch a salad, let's just make a commercial. Introducing Jack's new Barbecue Ranch Chicken Salad with barbecue tortilla strips, ranch dressing, and a barbecue drizzle. And now choose crispy or grilled chicken on any salad. Hey, beat it! Decades ago, America's vehicles were enormous. Then they shrunk. Ouch, that didn't work. So Nissan built the Versa with more head, leg, and elbow room. Cause you like that. Look at gas prices. They're high. Versa's fuel economy is high too. 36 miles per gallon. The Nissan Versa, starting at 13,175. We thought you'd want one, so we put them in Nissan dealers everywhere. Get there today. We're back at Camden Yards here, Oriole Park as the Orioles tie up the series with six runs, 11 hits, no errors. Angels, the losers, three runs, five hits, no errors. And today it was all about Brian Burtz, who had been without a decision in his last four outings. You know, as they, we talked about in the, just at the start of the game, his ability to be able to pitch to both sides of the plate, never let you feel comfortable at the plate looking for any certain pitch. Rob Quinlan there swinging over top of a slider down and in, and then Jose Molina out in front of a changeup. Sean Figgins. Another slider down and in on that cut fastball, the two-seam fastball. Solid job, resting the bullpen, going seven and two-thirds inning. Brian Burst did a fabulous job as far as pitching, working down and working effectively. And the save goes to Paul Shuey. First save since 0-2. And tomorrow the matchup, the finale on FSN West at 10.30 a.m. Join us for John Lackey, his 10-5 and record against Jeremy Guthrie, two very good arms. Very good arm. This should be a great pitching matchup. John Lackey responded after getting a little bit extra rest. Last start out there, had his best break of all of the season. Look for him to do it again. And Jeremy Guthrie was fantastic against the Angels at home. Eight innings before they took him out. 
The Angels came leading the American League in hitting at 292 collectively today, held to five. We will return right after this. Are you getting this? The odds the beaten path has been punched, kicked, and stomped on. 32 to 1. The LR3, created for the one. The LR3 by Land Rover, designed for the extraordinary. What's that thing? It's a salad mobile. Phil, ah, next time we launch a salad, Let's just make a commercial. Introducing Jack's new Barbecue Ranch Chicken Salad with barbecue tortilla strips, ranch dressing, and a barbecue drizzle. And now choose crispy or grilled chicken on any salad. Hey, beat it! <laughs> Electronic stability program. Available rear liftgate speakers. Standard side curtain airbags. <laughs> Full flat seats. And with an estimated 30 highway miles per gallon, you'll change the way you think about filling up. Now get the all-new Patriot for only $15,110 during the Jeep Independence Day event. Final score, second game of the series. Series is tied now. 1-1 as Baltimore takes it with a 6-3 victory, a three-run seventh marks the difference and also one guy that could have marked the difference making his major league debut Nick Grinnell today it was a beauty yeah he had a, had a great game here when you think about the fact is this a tough play ground ball through the hole man on second Corey Patterson who runs very well Nick Grinnell gets himself a great throwing position throws a rocket in the home plate to Jose Molina to get Patterson out by a step at the plate He's getting his feet wet with a base on balls he had a lot of fly balls good jumps aggressive in the outfield for Nick Grinnell so he did his job just came down to the bullpen of the Angels. Let him down a little bit today with Hector Carrasco. Gave up a three-run shot to Ramon Hernandez. The Angels now at 50 and 31. Lead the Mariners technically by four and a half. Oakland by eight and a half. And the Rangers by 17. An opportunity for a good team that has been winning series after being swept against the Royals at home to really recapture that magic again tomorrow. Yeah, yeah they're swinging the bat well. That's the bottom line. You got your ace on the, on the hill tomorrow to stop a losing streak. And John Lackey looking better and better as he got that little extra rest. Make sure you join us tomorrow. The Orioles take it 6-3. to three. Burris, the winner. Colon, the loser. At 10.30 a.m., John Lackey against Jeremy Guthrie. For my partner, Mark Gubaza, this is Jose Mora wishing you a very good night.